Hallelujah. Thank you so much, Reverend Sam. Please let's honor Reverend Sam and his dear wife. This is the best you can do. Amen. The Bible says, No eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store, not for Christians, not for churchgoers, but for them that love him. Hallelujah. And I truly believe, like Reverend Sam said, that we're in a season where the benefits of loving Jesus will be made visible. It will be clear to all and sundry that indeed it pays to love Jesus. It pays to serve Jesus. It pays to live for Jesus. Hallelujah. We're gathered here tonight because we love him. We're gathered here tonight because we expect that in loving and serving him, we will be blessed. So let's lift our hands in one minute and ask the Lord again to speak to us. Go ahead and pray in one minute. The Bible says, For everyone that asketh receiveth. Everyone who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door shall be opened. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we pray that you will help us breathe upon us tonight grant us grace grant us illumination for in jesus mighty and matchless name we pray amen and amen please be seated thank you again for this opportunity we'll take off from where we left off yesterday we began discussing a few things yesterday i was teaching on the laws of exploits the laws of exploits and i started by challenging us on the necessity for extraordinary results that it is important for the believer in Christ to command results God is glorified when there is proof through our lives that serving God pays hallelujah we considered a few scriptures yesterday that God desires and is glorified in our being fruitful and then I challenged us that there are two dimensions of knowledge essentially as far as exploits is concerned number one yesterday we said the knowledge of god the bible says the knowledge of him daniel eleven thirty two. 32 it says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and they shall do exploits second peter 1 2 and 3 the bible says grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of him and we establish this and let me please emphasize this uh, for the next minute or so that when you begin your walk with God remember the first dimension of knowledge is not the knowledge of things it's not the knowledge of principles it is the knowledge of the person when God calls you he calls you to himself he doesn't call you to an assignment he doesn't call you to a mission he doesn't call you to a ministry that is the latter part of his dealings he says, come, follow me. He called the disciples to be with him and then to represent him. Hallelujah. And so it's very important. Um, we must know God. And I did um, share with us yesterday that there are essentially three dimensions to the knowledge of God. When we seek to learn God, when we seek to know God, there are three dimensions in that pursuit. I only gave us two yesterday. That number one, we know God by learning his nature and his character his nature and his character when we know god's nature when we know god's character did you know that what we call the fruit of the spirit is actually an expression of god's nature that he seeks to be made manifest in the believer hallelujah yeah galatians 5 22 it is the bible says but the fruit of the spirit now king james and other older versions didn't do justice in expressing that because you would think he was talking about nine fruits as it were and even though that is applicable the truth is that 
the fruit of the spirit as it emanates from God is only one like the Holy Spirit love but then its expression all of those things called joy peace they are manifestations different dimensions of love just like you find in Isaiah 11 same spirit but a sevenfold manifestation are we together yes so the, the zenith God's nature the Bible never says God has love God loves but God is love so you can learn God by learning his nature his nature the fruit of the spirit that when you see these manifestations in God it will help you to distinguish between God and any other deity between God and any other spirit are we together now one of the ways that we we set ourselves free from error and confusion is to learn the nature of God Satan cannot mimic the nature of God he can only mimic the power are we together yes the nature of God is higher than his power it's true it is from his nature that his power flows because even faith works by love are we together now so it's important for us to understand this we learn God by learning his nature number two we learn God by studying his power this is profound Psalm 63 and verse 2 he says oh Lord you are my God early will I seek you my soul longs for you um, to see your power and your glory so I have seen in, as I have seen in the sanctuary it's important that we learn the power of God Ephesians chapter 1 we read yesterday from verse 19 among the many things Paul prayed that the church in Ephesus would come into the understanding of is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe that means that we understand the vastness the extent of his might and his power Hallelujah. I resisted the temptation yesterday to tell you a few things about power. I don't want to distract my teaching today with that, but I think I feel compelled to say it, that there is a difference between power and authority. Um, this may sound like an error, but it's important for your learning. This is a conference. God does not have authority. God cannot have authority. Authority is the legitimacy to use power. Are we together? Yes and every time you bring authority there are two things that must happen one you must give authority jurisdiction we have a lot of judicial people here there is no authority without jurisdiction no kind of authority works indefinitely what gives value to authority is that you define its jurisdiction number two authority cannot function except a higher power supervises its use are we together <laughs> So when you say God has authority, it means there has to be another being and a deity higher than him that number one, defines his use of that power and number two, supervises his compliance to the terms of use. Now, all authority has been given to me, Jesus said, when he became a man. Are we together now? Yes. It is men that have authority and power. As a man, if you have power alone, you are dangerous like an arm robber an arm robber has power in a gun but has no authority that is why he's arrested when he uses it versus a military man who has power and authority so authority is the legitimacy to use power are we together what god gave believers is not just power don't seek power alone no it is dangerous he gives power and authority those who have power alone are rebels the centurion understood this and he said for i am a man he never said i'm a powerful man he said i am a man under authority my power is derived from the authority i submit to and i say to one go and he will go to another come and he will come he said jesus i know that you did not just come with power as god incarnate manifest in the flesh you also have authority there were times where jesus was going to heal people he took them out of certain cities into certain cities to heal them and so when he resurrected, he said, all authority in heaven and on earth is the word exousia. The legitimacy to, to exercise power has been given to me. Are we together now? And I give you that same authority. God, the Father, does not have authority. He has absolute power. His power is not derived. He was not given. 
it's not a product of conquest he did not fight for it he is the owner hmm. are we together if you don't understand this one day demons will tell you Jesus I know Paul I know but who are you they will question your walking in power and question your walking in authority do you know the meaning of this when God limits himself as far as exercising power it is not weakness it is for the sake of the saints <laughs> many times we teach and sincerely so that if we don't give God permission he cannot move that is a very sincere theology but it's not accurate he is the owner of the power if God vetoes your will he is not in error it is still his power the earth is the Lord's number two the fullness thereof number three the walls and number four the inhabitants they all belong to him so if God decides to override your will by what parameter do you say he is wrong you see why the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie lying is based on a reference and that reference does not apply to him <laughs> That means if God decides that he's going to lift you tomorrow, there is no authority that questions him because there is no reference that supervises him. He submitted himself to his word, not because of weakness. Are we together now? It was a pattern so that we get to learn that he looked for one higher so that he would swear by. Not finding any, he swore by himself to convince you that by this oath and by this promise, he is dependable. You get that now? Anyway, so you know God by knowing his power. The Bible says, Our Lord God, thou hast made the heavens and the earth by thy great power. I have spoken once and twice have you heard that power belongeth to the Lord. I explained to us the concept of El Shaddai yesterday that El Shaddai means literally the multi-breasted one. It's an attempt to show his extent of sufficiency. Remember the example I gave us yesterday? That if a woman has two or three or four children when she's breastfeeding them two will have to be patient no matter how loving she is because she's limited she cannot serve all of them at the same time so when the Bible calls him the multi-breasted one one does not have to suffer because he's attending to the other he is that vast his power can administer love to everyone without another person being affected this is how mighty he is when you know this you will know that as God is touching someone in America, touching someone in Europe, his attention is not so, is, is not so busy that he cannot attend to you. You are talking to El Shaddai. Right now we are here, there is a conference somewhere across the globe. There is someone praying somewhere at a retreat. And the same God is hearing them and the same God will supply. When you know that you can believe that this prayer that you have written there will be answered. For the Bible says, and this is the confidence that we have. That when we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And that if he hears us, then we know that we have our petitions granted. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. So it's important that we know God. The difference will be clear in this end time. Those who know God and those who do not hallelujah knowing god is not a gift there is a labor to press to study his nature the end product of the knowledge of god is confidence please write it down the end product of the knowledge of god is confidence your confidence is directly connected to your knowledge of god and remember the bible says to cast not away your confidence and it gives you that the reason why it says it has a great recompense of rewards there are rewards connected to being confident. It was on the strength of the knowledge of God that David could stand before Goliath. It was on the strength of the knowledge of God that the nation of Israel could stand before their enemies. Even enemies stronger and greater than themselves. Hallelujah. But I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which is committed unto him against that day. John 17 and verse 3, we considered that yesterday. This is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus, whom thou hast sent. Hallelujah. At the apex of Paul's apostolic ministry, he vocalized his desire, his prayer point, that I may know him. Not just that I may receive more from him, 
that I may know him. It is a very powerful prayer. When you know God, there are certain things that will lose their grip in your life. It's true. There are certain fears, I told us yesterday, that will die when you know God, when you encounter him. I've had the honor and privilege to have met him, not just by scripture. He has come to me. The Bible says, blessed is every man that the Lord causes to approach him. There are certain levels of audacity you cannot have theoretically. It is a product of a genuine encounter. Hallelujah. This is not about blind, bold face that leaves you with pain and, and shame and embarrassment. This is an encounter with proof. When Moses met him, it was clear. When Abraham met him, it was clear. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for you that as this, as this service is ongoing, may someone come into an encounter with the God of the Bible. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. The capacity to believe God, like you will be learning today, what you call faith is a direct product of the confidence that is derived from your knowing God. Hallelujah. There are certain fears that do not exist again when you meet him, when you know him. Every time God tells me to do daring things and the moment the human nature wants to step in because of the magnitude the Spirit of God quickens the encounter of him that I had and doubt and fear dies immediately. This is also the kind of revelation that sponsors creative miracles. One day you will stand before situations that will challenge you. And if you do not have an encounter bigger than that obstacle, you will regret being a Christian at that point because you will wonder why did I give my life to Christ? Because I'm now mandated to bring this deliverance, this healing, this breakthrough. And the mountains are staring you. And there are times you need to know the one who is called the Lord, Yahweh. The earth is the Lord's. If you know that there are, you will be secured. Listen, the knowledge of God has a therapeutic effect. The average African, the average Nigerian has been wounded from their background as a result of poverty or deprivation. And there is only so much counseling and human therapy can do. When his majesty appears to you and tells you he loves you, it, it, it imprints something upon your heart. It says, I have loved you with an everlasting love and with my loving kindness I have drawn you. You want to be secured? No God. When you know God and you have an, a revelation of the one you look like, you will resist naturally the pressure to become anything, to please people. No, 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 no. no. All those things die permanently. I'm telling you this. Cast not away your confidence, for it has a great recompense of reward. Are we together now? So today we're going to just take it off from there and then we'll pray by the Spirit of God. So lend me your attention. The second dimension of knowledge that we need for our exploits in the kingdom is the knowledge of his ways. The knowledge of his ways, what we call the mysteries of the kingdom. We are considering the laws of exploits. Hallelujah. That second to the knowledge of God, it is important that we understand the mysteries of the kingdom. And please, I want you to truly, truly lend me your attention because... This is where many believers get defeated. This is where many believers get cheated in life and destiny. Because they hope that just because God loves them, they hope that just because they are Christians, sincere Christians, that life will just happen for them in a way that their lives will become an expression of the glory of God. And many eventually get disappointed. This is true for ministers, true for business people, family people, and so on. In Ephesians 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, Blessed, it says, Blessed be the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Please give it to us. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let's finish it together. One to go. Who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Notice that description. The Bible says, The Father of our Lord Jesus Christ hath blessed us, the us, every believer. But he says he's blessed us with all, not some, all spiritual blessings. And the Bible says in heavenly places and in Christ. 
very powerful information in first corinthians chapter 2 i believe let's read verse 12 first corinthians 2 and verse 12 first corinthians 2 and verse 12 the bible says now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit which is of god to what end that we might know the things that are freely given to us of god the Bible will tell us that no eye has seen, no ear has heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has in store for them that love him. He says, but the Spirit of God, are we together now? That the Spirit of God has the singular assignment of making that which is in the heart of the Father revealed to reveal it to the saints. And the Bible says that we have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us second peter chapter one when we read from verse four the bible says wherefore i like verse four second peter chapter one please give us verse four whereby are given unto us is someone following exceeding great and precious promises it says by these promises that means when you take a hold of these promises and they become manifest in your life they validate the fact that in experience you have become a partaker of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss that means the zoe life that you have now received can only be made manifest to the scene of all men when you embrace these mysteries of the kingdom and engage them with understanding the difference between any two believers is not the love of god it's not even the will of god is the degree to which they have come into an experiential comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom are we together now so we define our possibilities in this kingdom to the degree to which we understand the ways of god this is very powerful our world is full of all kinds of believers there are believers who consistently live defeated lives well-meaning sincere believers and they wonder why their lives are not able to speak his praises and many times they think it's the will of god but the will of god is not left uh, i mean the will of god we are not as a, at a loss the bible tells us that the spirit of god has the singular assignment of bringing us into an understanding of the will of god is someone learning now so just because you see a believer living a defeated life sincerely so does not mean that his condition is a reflection of god's desire for him god's desire is captured clearly and revealed in his word i am come john 10 10 that ye may have life in fact it starts by saying the thief cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy he says i am come listen carefully that ye may have life he was not talking to a preacher he was not talking to a businessman he was talking to any and every believer i am come that ye may have life and that you have that life more abundantly do you believe this the bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that it shineth more and more unto the perfect day more and more in ministry more and more in business more and more in your home in god's mind no believer should have a better yesterday no in his economy your yesterday should never be better than your tomorrow more and more more and more that means the last time you sh you see me should be the least level you see me in that the next time you see me i should be a greater manifestation of the glory of god the bible says even among the stars one different from another in glory say in the name of jesus shout it with faith in the name of jesus i decree and declare that my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god one more time my life must become a manifestation of the glory of god believe this apostle but there is nothing in my life now that is an expression of what i just said did your bible not say for our light afflictions which is but for a moment it says that it walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory in fact he says in romans 8 18 i reckon that the sufferings of this present time he says are not worthy to be compared with the glory there is a dimension of god's glory that should be revealed in us for the endless expectation of creation he says awaited the manifestation of the sons of god you have to believe this you have to believe this 
this is how exploit comes if you do not believe that it is in your destiny to become a reflection of the glory of god you will live a weak and a defeated christian life blaming everybody and blaming everything reject every lie the devil has told you i don't care what is happening or not happening in your life you are in an atmosphere of faith my assignment is to shake away unbelief from your life believe that it is in your destiny to become a reflection of god's glory and while believing don't mind the naysayers while believing don't mind the situation there is a force in the spirit that can change things to be consistent with the will of god do you believe this there are few people in life who had the honor of being born great by our natural description of greatness many people found these principles and began to push their way let me tell you the truth there is no space waiting for you in destiny you create your space with understanding the illusion that there is a space waiting for you is a joke an expensive joke if it will ever happen in your destiny there is a responsibility component my assignment tonight as we proceed is to get you angry you keep giving last year's excuses this year will look like last year you need to get angry in your spirit as a preacher as a business person it is not a blind anger it's an anger that is supported by light it says arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you it says rise to a new light hallelujah so when you know him your next assignment is to now begin to learn methodically the mysteries of the kingdom are the only ladders by which the saints ascend to the place of destiny these mysteries are ladders they are not an information that is what you climb to make prophecy happen it does not happen because it was spoken to you no there are many things that God and prophets said to people in the Bible that did not come to pass because that which they should do as far as engaging prophecy was not done the Bible says forever oh Lord your word is settled not everywhere in heaven in heaven not in your life there is something you must do to make it settled please sit down Are we learning so the bible tells us that god has given us all things all things every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in christ but watch this now let's go to job chapter 38 and verse 33 let me your attention now job was having a discussion with god at this point job was frustrated he could not make sense of the things that had been happening around his life back to back to back to back this guy kept hearing bad news I, I i wonder how the kind of emotional strength job had is noteworthy that in one day you come with a report you lose your estate you lose your children and there is always one witness left at the end of it the bible says he bowed down and he worshiped but he did not stop there one day job got angry and he said god we need to talk we need to talk and then God asked Job one question that he's asking you tonight. This question holds the key to your exploits this year. I'm praying that God will open your eyes to see. Let's read together. If we can have NIV, else that would be fine. Job 38 and verse 33. It says, knowest thou, all right, go ahead. NIV, ready? Let's read, one to read. Do you know the laws of the heavens? And can you set up God's dominion using those laws in the earth? Do you know the laws that regulate heaven heaven is not just heaven just because god is there there are mysteries that make heaven a place of dexterity he says have you mastered the art of transporting those realities it is by those realities you will exert dominion upon the earth do you know the laws of the heavens and can you use them to set up god's dominion not on the earth over the earth 
what makes heaven so dexterous there is no record of god roaming around heaven supervising loyalty yet disloyalty is judged immediately what law did he put in place what makes heaven a place of abundance what makes heaven a place of love he's saying that those realities you can take those principles and transport them to your life he says let it be done in earth not on earth as it is done in heaven your kingdom come thy will be done in earth the first earth is not the ground you the earthen vessel let his will be done in your life listen when jesus was teaching us to pray this is what he said he said when you pray pray thus our father which art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come notice now your kingdom come do you know why because when his kingdom comes and his will is being done the remaining part of the prayer you will not need to pray it again give us our daily bread forgive us our sins are we together now that those other parts of the prayer only become necessary because his kingdom has not come and his will has not been done hallelujah so the believer's life is at the mercy of your understanding please sit down and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom now please pay attention i have taught you that the word of god is a compendium of all the possibilities that are contained in god are we together every time you open the bible you are interacting with the mysteries of the kingdom these are the forces that control dominion dominion is not an impartation you have heard me say it is the resultant effect of your understanding and engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you define your possibilities upon the strength of understanding what are the possibilities that are available for us in christ lend me your attention as i list them for you favor speed lifting in fact you find them captured in the worship that was in Revelation chapter 4 and Revelation chapter 5. Worthy is the lamb that was slain, he said, to receive for us. And he begins to list them, seven of them. But there are many more. Everything that makes for the revelation of the glory of God in your life is connected to a mystery. Let me repeat myself. Everything that makes for the revelation of the glory of God in your life is connected to a mystery. Look up, please. Financial prosperity is connected to a mystery divine health and healing is connected to a mystery speed is connected to a mystery honor connected to a mystery favor connected to a mystery longevity connected to a mystery influence connected to a mystery are we together now the anointing even in ever increasing dimensions connected to a mystery don't just desire the outcomes you must learn the mysteries that connect to the results you desire so there is just blind desire with all due respect in the body of christ the average believer can tell you what he desires instinctively we know that if my life becomes a capture of health passion consecration prosperity speed honor imagine that kind of believer paints that picture on your mind such a wholesome believer that has a rich capture of the glory of god but the average believer cannot explain to you intelligently the mysteries that are connected to their desires king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you king of kings lord of lords faithful and true lamb of god we worship you listen as i'm speaking to you you are not just hearing a man there is an anointing that is quickening your spirit something is happening to you i'm not a lecturer are we together these are spirit communications something is happening within your spirit man that will stop you from being ordinary he said in ezekiel 2 and verse 2 and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me the mysteries of the kingdom so when you find certain believers living exceptional lives through diligence through submission to instructions taking advantage of the grace of god they have found one or more or many and you see the keys for your dominion are finite they are not infinite like a curriculum that a student passes through his learning continues but you can exhaust a curriculum the bible calls it marvelous light 
It is the curriculum that controls our dominion. You can exhaust it and know you have held the keys of the kingdom. Do you believe this? So you will find men who experience this transition in the spirit on account of light. Something would have happened to them. And you see certain results, God-like in their nature. These are not results that humans can afford. You don't get it in the bank. You don't get it in the marketplace. They have mastered the art of importing divine realities from the realm of the spirit to be made manifest here and now. This is what it means to be a living epistle. That your life becomes a continuation of someone's Bible study. God refers you to men who want to learn him. Your life is an un, un, unending wonder. Not a theoretical wonder. Not an assumed wonder. Is someone learning? Now please look at me. I'm standing right here with several prayer requests. There are several of them here. I'm sure there are several of them that will be coming. Did you know that almost every one prayer request here that you see there is a mystery that is connected to that outcome did you hear what i said it is true for most people their major problem centers around finances or perhaps their health are we together or perhaps a job perhaps some destiny helper to lend you their attention did you know that nothing just happens this is where both science and religion agree talk to me intelligent people you went to school yeah. Sir Isaac Newton in his study of mechanics he postulated certain laws and remember one of the laws says a body in a uniform motion or state of rest it will remain that way except compelled by an external force to act otherwise what is the meaning of that? that means every condition remains like that until a force greater than what keeps it is exerted it is true it is true listen this is not entertainment this is your destiny everything that means this year will be like last year and every other year until you engage something this year that you did not engage last year hallelujah what do you know that controls speed what do you know that controls favor you believe people will just like you like that whereas god already told you that the whole world lies in wickedness in this biased bedeviled world who will forget about their problems and suddenly focus on you no there is an energy that light brings it compels creation to respond to you in a certain way please find a way of believing this it is true man of god i hate to be a bearer of bad news but ministry this year will be like last year until you show me the light that bails you out yes sir yes sir I like the Bible arise it says and shine it says for your light not for time has gone mm -mm. for your light has come for your light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen on upon you it says for darkness shall cover the earth to who are who confusion and chaos and darkness the people it says but upon you the glory of God shall arise I receive verse 3 for myself it says Gentiles shall come shall come of course nobody leaves what works gentiles shall come to your light not to you to your light and they are kings to the brightness of your rising may this be your testimony in the name of jesus the son of the living god that the level and the extent of light that will rest upon you you will command dominion you will tame life like an animal upon the strength of understanding. You believe that? Shout amen. amen. Please sit down. Please sit down. So what most believers do is to just guess and hope. This is really the punchline in my discussion. That guessing and hoping and wishing for time to on its own deliver to you that which you desire will leave you disappointed. I don't have to be a prophet to tell you the word of God already tells us there was a man who who in John 5 he laid down near a pool Reverend Sam for 38 years I hope you know 38 years starts with one year then two years then three years he would have said no by the fourth year no he remained there 
and every year the possibility for his deliverance kept happening the oldest situation that the bible names the bible gives timing to tragedies that man's own was the highest we know aside from the nation of israel that a single man he sat down there proximity to the source of deliverance but one year became two years three years four years five years by the 15th year they are giving birth to somebody who came and joined him there and the person left and left the person there then jesus came to him and said why are you in this condition and he said i have no man he knew the power of relationships but that was the only mystery he knew he didn't know that there are other mysteries also hmm. the danger of knowing only there are many people who know some things but not sufficient to give them the victory they desire reminds me of a very great man of god in acts chapter 18. the bible tells us that this man was born at alexandria eloquent in scripture fervent in spirit but he knew only the baptism of john you must be aware of the knowing only syndrome <laughs> it is not a key every every house here has several keys reverend sam and just because you have the key that brings you inside the house does not mean you have the keys to the rooms the kitchen can be locked you are in the house but you do not have the key to the kitchen you will know the value of that key when you are hungry am i right on that yes when you see people walk in dominion it is not just their persona it is that within them they have held keys when they stand before the things that plague men they check within their spiritual archives and there is a key there is a key oh i don't like you we leave you you're not getting this job again and rather than crying they smile because there is another key they know what to engage that will wake a destiny helper up all through the night did the bible not say someone came to knock a door of his friend and he said no it's too late and there was something he did he wanted only three loaves but the friend gave him as many as he wanted do you know what that key is you see the stories and the parables in the bible are beyond just a storyline within them there are mysteries the bible says revelation in the knowledge of him so revelation is hidden in knowledge just because you have knowledge does not mean it has been revealed to you revelation is a mystery that is hidden in knowledge you can read a story and then find the light from within it hallelujah apostle i want to experience favor this year can i know what you have engaged or are engaging for the favor i just know god will do it i entered this this year believing god let me tell you up front i really hate to be a bearer of bad news but you are already programming disappointment because it doesn't happen that way light of the world you've stepped down to my darkness open my eyes let me see that should be your prayer you're the light of the world you've stepped down into darkness open my eyes let me see will you open my eyes let me see Open my eyes, let me see that God will show you the way out. I'm waiting for my uncle to get an appointment. He promised me that when he gets it, he will give me a job. Hmm. Whereas your uncle is also waiting for help. So you become pained and you become frustrated. But is it not in your Bible that they looked unto him? And their faces were lightened except you do not believe it i hope you are not just shouting yes for nothing you really believe what i'm saying yes so there are many people who say want to prosper let me talk about two areas that concern us this issue of finances you see how it has embarrassed a lot of believers and there are two groups those who pretend they don't need it and those who are obsessed around it. both of them are in trouble you see that now so god, does god help men economically yes but how does he do it how does god do it 
there are many economic principles which one do you know and which one do you not know are we together now essentially God helps men by empowering them with wisdom empowering them with productivity and giving them direction this has been his eternal strategy for empowering men the power to prosper works threefold the first place it works is on your mind not your bank account it alters your understanding it brings you to a state of illumination then the blessing of the Lord rests upon the work of your hands then it grants you direction the Lord is my shepherd he says I shall not want is someone learning now another way God prospers men in the kingdom is by connecting them to those he has already helped and causing them to have favor towards you listen if you are not Abraham the moment you find out you are Lord start respecting Abraham if not you are going to suffer the easiest way God helps men financially especially when time has gone beyond productivity is relationships when God wants to show a man mercy fast so that he will catch up he will look for Abraham and teach you how to be a wise lot before him because when God spoke to Abraham lot was not there and if you do not know how to be wise as lot you will not maximize the blessing that was on Abraham if you do not know how to be Ruth with wisdom you will not be able to glean from the vineyard of Boaz Ruth did not need to farm and wait for harvest she only needed to secure favor from Boaz and she had the advantage of gleaning from the farm and he gave an instruction that it should not be done once the classic character of favor it does not happen only once it happens again and again and again how about walking in divine health ladies and gentlemen are you not aware that Satan is determined to destroy the bodies of men because there is a law that your spirit can only remain if your body sustains a certain health level are we together every human being is given the gift of one body per lifetime one body not two one body per lifetime and the condition for your spirit to remain is that your body must have a certain health condition if it deteriorates beyond a certain threshold your spirit will leave whether it is your time or not so one of the ways that Satan aborts the purposes of God is to create deterioration in your body and bring a separation between your spirit and your body. He says, a body has thou prepared for me. Are we together now? That means you have a responsibility to remain healthy. But it does not just happen by hoping. There are keys. There are keys. My God, there are keys. There are keys. Number one is to know that longevity is your portion in Christ. You have to believe that. Not out of fear. But there are keys. Number one, I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. The degree to which you plunge yourself in God's program can secure your longevity. Number two, honor your father and your mother in the Lord, that it may be well with you and that your days may be long. Number three, I set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. I advise you choose life. You choose life by verbalizing it and taking pro-life decisions like your health, like eating well, like your exercise. All of those are your commitment towards living healthy. You can't just claim longevity and ignore the mysteries connected to it. Is someone learning now? The Bible tells us that the heaven of heavens belong to the Lord, but the earth has he given to the sons of men. That means if one man is not standing on your side, you will suffer as if Jesus did not die. This is the world of men. Don't ignore men. No. That means you have to learn relational principles that give you an edge in life. You are gifted without relationships, you will be alone. The strength of productivity is in its connection. Be fruitful means be connected. Biology teaches us that fruitfulness is a product of relationships. It is on the strength of connection of a husband and a wife that a baby comes. If you are that husband, what other relationship will serve as the other part that makes be fruitful happen? Are we together now? Is someone learning? So there are many people who do not understand, for instance, the principle of honor, relational principles, and yet they continue to pray, Lord, bring my destiny helper. You have said it. I even saw it in my dream. A man of God spoke to me, and heaven wants you to experience that dimension of God's glory. But the mystery connected to it, you are not interested in learning it. And so good people and good things continue to pass you. 
because you have not been able to attract good people through your character your consciousness your sense of relationship and whenever it is taught in church the devil will make you believe it is too elementary and you ignore it to your peril recycling pain again and again and again who hates you does not matter but who likes you in this world oh yes it does matter ask Ahasuerus ask Boaz Vashti is hated she loses her throne immediately a village girl is loved she becomes queen immediately someone who was crying for losing all the men in her life she carries this favor and she heads straight to the vineyard of Boaz and Boaz likes her and tells the men nobody should waylay and, and, and oppress this lady leave her to glean just like that she returns back to Naomi and says I found favor to cut the long, the long story short, she's given a chance again to enjoy destiny. Another side of destiny. Are we together now? These are the forces that men engage. There are people who may not be so gifted, they may not be so skilled, but they have found the keys to relationships, for instance, and they command all kinds and all dimensions of success. How about the anointing? There are many people who know the value of the anointing, but they do not know the price for the anointing. Knowing the value, the importance, the usefulness of the anointing is wonderful, but do you know the price for the anointing? Many people just want to claim. The average believer just knows that the only way to be anointed is to find an anointed person, kneel down perhaps with a seed on your hand, and then he lays hands on you. There are dimensions of the anointing that are not transferable. It is not every part of the anointing that is transferable. There are wells in the spirit that you must dig by yourself. It's an illusion to believe that every dimension of the anointing is transferable. No, no, no. There are certain prayers when they pray for you, it's not the anointing that was transferred. It's the hunger of the person who has it that it transferred to you. That hunger is what will drive you to the secret place. And you begin to dig your well, taking advantage of the enabling of the spirit. Until you, there is something about God you must know to carry that anointing. So it will not just come because hands were laid on you. No. What you carry is the hunger that begins to lead you to start that experience with God. So many people want to be anointed. Our generation has come into a very healthy appreciation of the anointing. We know what the anointing can do, but there is a price for it. The price is not just prayer. The price is not just fasting. It's not just Bible study. The greatest price for the anointing is a correct heart. Your heart condition is greater than your prayer life. Your heart condition is greater than your fasting. I can tell you. All those other spiritual exercises only find their place when your heart is right. The psalmist says, create in me a clean heart. Then he says, renew a right spirit within me. This is the psalmist praying. Hallelujah. I don't want to go into showing you, but let's try it. Second Chronicles chapter 25. I think verse 2. Please give it to us. Is God speaking to someone now? <laughs> let's read verse 2. Ready, everybody? One to read. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. Look at this scripture. How do you do what is right? Prayer is right. Fasting is right. Giving is right. Coming to church is right. Serving is right. But the Bible says that is not enough to draw the attention of God. Your heart condition is what gives value to every spiritual activity. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but the only thing that was wrong was his heart condition. hallelujah there are believers who want to command power for instance and they do not want to invest in the ministry of prayer they do not want to invest in the ministry of the word the average believer is bankrupt of light they are not aware of the exceeding great and precious promises sample two believers and mention several areas in in their lives and tell them to defend their results with one scripture each you will be disappointed and pained. Convince me that you have found light in the area of your health. One scripture. Maybe I just know God will do it. It's, it's, a, it's a very lazy way of contending for growth. 
Did you hear my description? Very lazy way of contending for growth. Nobody becomes a winner that way. No. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I be afraid of? Hallelujah. When men say there is a casting down, for me I say that there is a lifting up. I realize that to connect with the supplies of heaven, there is he that scattereth and yet increaseth. So when I give, it's not just a bribe in the house of the Lord. My, my giving is supported by superior understanding. When I come to a man of God and drop a seed, I'm not copying a ritual I saw somewhere or just to ease the guilt. I bring that seed with understanding and I know, I understand what is happening in the realm of the spirit. When I get up in the night to pray, I'm not just doing some spiritual jamboree. I am praying because I have found out that it is a mystery that controls definite outcomes in the spirit. He spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 To pray without ceasing. James 5.13 It says, If any man afflicted, let him pray. Mark 11.24 what things soever ye desire he says when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them what scripture supports your confidence in life what scripture makes you believe that your possibilities will be different in spite of the plunging economy across the nations have you defined your reality this is what exploit is about you want to thrive you have to know the exceeding great and precious promises and then know the conditions connected to the delivery of the results you desire. What mystery controls favor? What mystery controls longevity? What mystery controls um, lifting? How do you know you will be promoted in the place of your job? Oh, because it's my tribesman who just assumed the office. No, no, no. What makes you believe? As a man of God that people will still be interested in hearing you just because they had you last year does not mean they want to hear you now and they have a right to want to stop hearing you hmm. are we together it says my heart is indicting a good matter yea I speak of excellence things that my tongue is the pen of a ready writer that every time you speak there are ears it's like an artist you are writing upon the destinies of men Gideon blew a shofar and 33,000 people gathered together. What gives you the confidence as a leader that the loyalty of those who work with you will remain? In this bedeviled world where people can vacillate their loyalty. What is the key? The Bible says that if you are prepared to lose, you will keep. But when you keep, you will lose. Have you understood that mystery? For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Hallelujah. Apostle, my own is that I want promotion. God has been talking to me about promotion. Do you know what controls promotion? It's not just prayer. It's competence. 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 Yes, sir. See yet thou, he said, the gift of a man. Make it room. It didn't say shows him where the room is. It makes room. It pushes everything until it creates his space for him. Joseph was anointed, but Joseph was competent. It was not interpreting the dream that made him prime minister. He's providing solution on account of his knowledge of the dream. He offered an economic solution, intelligently communicated. And the king said, there is no such one this moment without interview without discussion there are many believers if you employ them you will regret employing them not because there's something wrong with their spirituality the value component is almost zero and they don't care they don't mind why do i invite you and then my organization goes down i love you but i love my organization so while you are preparing for favor and rising, you understand that competence is a weapon, is a ladder. You can ascend heights unknown. So while you are waiting for the job, you are fanning your value. It's proof that you are ready to experience that dimension of the glory of God. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. Am I challenging someone? We're going to pray. 
with all due respect you're a minister of the gospel here please listen there are many options today and people will not tolerate incompetence again you don't hold a mic and waste the time of intelligent people while praying that God will fill your church with people people are spiritual but they are not dummies are we together now I'm not being insulted I'm challenging you young man you are planning to go into ministry don't pray alone buy the truth buy the truth with humility submit yourself and learn a man of God is a communicator of ideas they are spiritual in origin but their value must be felt within the cosmos that people carry life applicable principles that come from scripture and they can watch their lives improve I have taught you that nobody lives what works a man will not carry his family and children and come and become members of your church and you are just you are disoriented and confused every week no they will sympathize with you but they, they love their destiny and they will leave and it's not a demonic attack it's the byproduct of ignorance study to show yourself approved unto God is that still in your Bible a workman that needed not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth I vowed before God that I will never stand before a people and stand confused disoriented and wrap up everything with amen no these are thoughts and ideas that are empowered by the spirit but that an intelligent person can go back and meditate and contemplate on the ideas there must be a point of application to your communication this thing you see is not just a product of grace alone there is a place of diligence am i wasting your time How do you know you are ready? Because men will start looking for you. If men do not look for you, it is because you are not prepared enough. It's an uncomfortable truth, but admit it right now, responsibly. I tell you the truth. Competence is a scarce product. It's impossible to see it and ignore it. When, when a truck that is carrying fuel, diesel or petrol, when it has an accident, sometimes with the risk involved, you will see people still trying to scoop. That is to tell you the kind of value they place on it. The world does not ignore genuine value. There is assumed value. There is value where you flatter yourself, comparing yourself with mediocres. But there is value that can stand any standard. The beauty of grace is when it comes upon a transformed vessel. The beauty of grace is when it comes upon a prepared vessel. The beauty of grace is when it comes upon competence. The full potential of grace is demonstrated in the presence of competence. For the way of the Lord is the way of wisdom. I choose the way of the Lord. We're going to pray and I'll minister to us shortly, but I want you to listen, ladies and gentlemen. I gave you an assignment yesterday let me give you one more would you do me a favor by going back home to write the various aspects of your life where you are yet to see the glory of God manifest one of the principles of faith is vision you have to give definition to your expectations God cannot meet nothing give us this day what our daily bread when your expectations are defined even psychology teaches that with in the presence of definition you are more prone to obtaining your results it is true most believers do not have definition to their expectation so you ask them what do you want God to do they will just say general blessings you know every part of my life is too vague how do you know when God has come through go back and write with clarity with precision this is what I'm trusting God to do there is a height in the spirit I'm trusting God to take me perhaps you're a man of God there is a time to invest in prayer and the word I have discerned laxity in my spiritual life and I'm trusting that this year as a goal that I will extend realms and height you write it so that when it happens you can give God definite thanks how about your finances as a responsible father responsible mother you look at the reality of the prevailing economy and begin to write what are your expectations the bible says what things soever ye desire they have a name give definition to them 
You are a man of God. You are trusting God for increase. Don't pray a blind prayer and say, God, just bring people. That is not an intelligent prayer. No. The Bible says, watch and pray. Watch is a product of your mind. That your mind has to be involved in your prayer to make it profitable. Increase has a definition. What are you trusting God for? And then God begins to prepare you to be the kind of man of God that can minister to the people you are praying to come. Are we together? You want to excel academically for instance. Lord grant me grace. There is the quickening of the spirit that can happen to your mind. Elihu said there is a spirit in man. Chapter 32 and verse 8. He says the breath of the almighty giveth men understanding. Job 32 and verse 8. There is a spirit in man. That the spirit of God can quicken your understanding. God-like comprehension. Exceeding great and precious promises. But for this service, you have come with hunger. You have come with expectation. Among the many things that happen when we are gathered is that we experience his benefits. Let me list five of them and then we pray. Psalm 103. Psalm 103. Bless the Lord, O my soul, verse 1 says. Are we together? Media, help us. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name, verse 2. It says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefits. There are benefits when we come to God. Five of them. Walk with me. Number three. The Bible says, who forgiveth thine iniquities. That means every time we're gathered unto the Lord like we are tonight, we expect his grace to be available to administer forgiveness. Number two, who healed all thy diseases. Please back up a bit. Thank you. Who healed how many? Say all. Let the issue concerning your health here you confess. Say all. Who healed all thy diseases. Number four. The Bible says, who redeemed thy life from destruction. That is deliverance. Deliverance is not just casting out spirit. It's separating men from conditions. It's not only spirits. You can be separated from a condition. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. That is called honor. And then the final verse. Who satisfied your mouth with good things. So that your youth is renewed like the eagles. When I come to God. I come believing that number one he exists. But number two on account of these promises. That he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder. Rewarding your sacrifice. You have been laboring from the start of this conference. That includes those who are following online. The next few minutes that we are going to be having. I like you to give your destiny dedicated attention. Plunge yourself in the prayer. Let your heart be open. Trust God to visit you. And by the way let me encourage those who are yet to submit their prayer request. If you're yet to submit your prayer request, please do well. Just wave it where you are. And ushers, please, can you help us? Let's just walk around so we pick it. And um, perhaps you may want to pass it to someone by the right or left to make it easier for the ushers. And for those of you online, I'm sure there should be a way of getting your request. We're about to pray right now. Why do we pray? Because God is ever ready to hear us and to answer us why do we pray because prayer is the authorized platform to communicate our needs and our petitions the bible says what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them philippians 4 6 it says be anxious for nothing but in everything how many things everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving it says let your request be made known unto god why do we pray? Because the Bible says, Ye have not because ye ask not. There is a promise in scripture that to everyone who asks, that he will receive. Matthew 7 and verse 7, it says, Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock, it says, and it shall be opened unto you. We want to ask right now in prayer. I'm a firm believer in the power of God. I've seen him do miraculous things. And my goodness, that he will glorify Jesus in this place today. Are you ready? If you are still writing, let me give you a few seconds to write. Perhaps your faith has been challenged and you want to still add a few things. The Bible says, Ephesians 3.20 Now unto him who is able to do, exceeding abundantly far above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. It says to him be the glory in the church, even by Christ Jesus. Amen. So we are talking to a God who hears. Unto thee 
that answers prayer shall all flesh come I believe in Jesus I believe in his power to heal ensure that within the next five minutes or so that we have that you will not walk out of this place with any infirmity in your body everything that is inconsistent with God's desire for you as revealed in scripture you have a responsibility to partner with the Spirit of God and partner with the word to get it out of your life do you believe that rise up on your feet and let's pray for a minute and then I speak over your life someone who is full of faith begin to pray in the spirit in one minute pray in the spirit in one minute pray in the spirit in one minute but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but now oh lord had a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head self tell me as loud as you can say father one more time say father in the name of jesus i decree and declare that my life will be a revelation of the glory of God I receive by faith all your promises for me go ahead and begin to pray I receive someone is praying I receive in the name of Jesus go ahead and pray and this is the confidence that we have in him that when we ask anything according to his will he heareth us go ahead and pray oh i receive by faith go ahead and pray divine help speed favor lifting by the power of the holy ghost Online pray, outside pray, man of God pray, businessman pray, worshippers pray. Ela shala kaska brakata brakata tosh. Shala barada brakata barada tosh. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now. I'm just going to speak over the sick I feel stirred in my heart to pray we may not have time to take the testimonies but you can take that you know on Sunday you can come and testify but I want to pray particularly for the sick and then I want to speak the favor of God over your life and then we'll do the prayer there are many things to pray for but these two things your body and then to program a climate of favor over you many people have disrespected the power of the prophetic you will be joking just because there are abuses and imbalances does not mean you throw away the prophetic ministry it's an advantage that god gave us we transit realms we are changed upon the power of prophecy hallelujah i want to pray for the sick now listen to me the revelation behind healing is god's commitment to preserve your body and to give you the vitality needed to serve him and to represent him it's important you understand this when the sick are healed is beyond an attestation that the man of God is anointed no God's goal is way bigger than that it is God's commitment towards giving you sustained vitality it says they that be planted in the house of God it says they will flourish in the courts of our God that even in old age they will be fat and flourishing it then means that if you tolerate infirmity and sickness of any kind and any sort in your body it is your participation with darkness to cut short your life 
every manifestation of sickness is death being administered in a measure and according to the pattern of how satan works when he touches an area and you allow him unrestrained he will move further this is what he did to the church the early church the bible says herod made a commitment to vex certain jews and they caught james and beheaded james and the church kept quiet when he saw that it pleased the people the bible said he proceeded further satan touches your health you are quiet he proceeds further to your children proceeds further to your finances but then when we get to verse 5 the church became angry the bible says while he was waiting so that when you know the feast was over the bible says the church came together but prayer was made by the church unto god for him and angels came to the rescue the same angels that rescued peter were available to rescue james so as i pray for you make sure you do not entertain any trace of infirmity and sickness in your body as jesus taught the bible says the power of god was present the presence of the power does not mean it is administered to you it has to be received by faith healing is governed by the hearing of faith the hearing of faith that god wants to heal you and then you open up your hearts to receive when you receive by faith every time jesus healed the sick he did not leave them that way he would always ask them to take steps in response to their belief this is the definition of faith faith is not just believing god faith is the name given to your response of obedience as proof that you believe believing god is part of the process that leads to faith but it is not faith until there is a response in obedience it is not faith in one word faith is obedience faith is not action faith is obedience you can act in disobedience jonah acted but in disobedience we do not call his action faith because it was against the word of god your action must be consistent to the word of God and the instruction that has come. Are we together? Yes. Lay your hands right now. I want to pray for you. Standing in faith with Reverend Sam, I want to pray for you. For as long as I live, I will see to it that everyone who is sick, oppressed of the devil, according to Acts 10 38, that they have a chance to experience the power of God. He said how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power and he went about on the strength of that empowerment doing good and healing all not some they that were oppressed of the devil he says for God was with him Acts chapter 10 when you read from verse 34 they said God is no respecter of persons I like that scripture that God is no respecter of persons God is no respecter of persons I want to pray for you lay your hands now if it's a part of your body you cannot touch just make contact with your chest by faith you can stand in for your loved one perhaps some mother somewhere trusting god for a miracle deliverance from any kind whatever it is lay your hands there right from the moments of worship as we enjoy the presence of god here we've been building momentum in the spirit and now that the word has come god's power is available to bring you healing healing right here on site healing online across distance is no barrier and i want you to believe as i speak they are not empty words they are empowered there is a throne that backs our speakings omnipotent father of mercy and grace thou art welcome me in this place father in the name of jesus I lay my hands by faith upon everyone who is sick in their bodies i'm seeing people lift medical reports i'm seeing people lifting photos of their loved ones i wanted to connect by faith i'm about to speak to you now the bible says by his stripes we were healed peter said the spirits that are the back of every infirmity here represented in the name of jesus christ the son of the living god we take authority over those spirits now shout a believing amen now shout a believing amen now every spirit that is back of any infirmity plaguing god's people i decree and i declare that you give way now and i minister the life and the power of jesus to your body i declare be healed now 
be healed now be healed now my god be healed now eye conditions be healed now blood conditions of any kind and any sort be healed now bone conditions be healed now I tell you I sense such a strong anointing of the Spirit of God I'm praying for someone who has a severe pain around your ankle in the name that is above all names be healed this moment there is a lady your left eye you are seeing please help them in the name of Jesus I'm seeing you have severe pain when you look it's like you are look you are, you are seeing an object your left eye the power of God is touching you right now I bring you life I bring you healing in the name of Jesus I've seen these kinds of conditions many times and the Lord is asking me to announce it again you are a lady your circle happens twice a month it is very irregular it comes with excruciating pain the power of God is touching you right now in the name of Jesus Christ I cast that devil from your body all kinds of growths fibroids lumps i declare they die now in the name of jesus christ you're having severe pain especially at the left side of your neck when you turn it this happened when you woke up one morning i'm praying for you now the power of god is touching you this moment i don't know what hospital is in garki but i'm seeing someone in a hospital there and the power of God is touching that person right now. Garki, a hospital there. In the name that is above all names. Let there be a miracle for you right now. Let there be a miracle for you right now. I'm seeing a woman sit on a chair and holding a child. This child should be about maybe four or five years. He has autism. Autism, this is what is wrong with that child. This is a woman from United Kingdom. You are sitting with your child. He has autism. Let the power of God touch that child now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are having problems with your knee. Your knee. Particularly your kneecap. You are not able to bend this way. Not without pain. The power of God is touching you right now. The Lord is showing me a lady. You had a dream. In that dream you saw yourself breastfeeding a baby. From the time you woke up, you've been having excruciating pain, particularly the right side of your breast. I cause that spirit right now. I cause that spirit right now. Lumbar spondylosis be healed. Peptic ulcer be healed. Migraine headaches be healed. I say it again, migraine headaches be healed. I command cancer to die. Sugar diabetes be healed. Pile. The Lord is healing someone from pile, painful pile. Be healed in Jesus' name. I'm seeing somebody having recurrent malaria. Recurrent. It keeps coming. You treat it. It comes. You treat it. I command that spirit to give way now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's someone having, your heart is not palpitating, but you are having breathing problems. If you lie down in a room, you know how an asthma patient is. You don't have asthma, but this thing affects your breathing. I'm seeing sometimes you stand close to the window, so you are able to breathe enough air. I want to pray for you. Anything wrong with your veins and your arteries, that the devil is programming death, no matter what it is called, I curse it now by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus, heart palpitations be healed lupus be healed rheumatoid arthritis be healed in the name of jesus christ the lord is showing me a man i'm seeing a man sitting you are beginning to have the initial stages of prostate cancer in the name that is above all names wherever you are whether you are here or following online by the god that we serve we call prostate by its name and we cause cancer by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is ministering to me. There is a lady. You're not, you're not, you don't have a child. 
but you are lactating you're lactating you don't have a child this is something you've gone to the hospital for in the name of jesus the son of the living god let that satanic occurrence come to an end now memory loss i'm hearing memory loss memory loss you forget things this is beginning to affect you in your place of work in the name of jesus i speak to you you have the mind of christ you have the mind of christ you have the mind of christ the lord is asking me to speak over someone i'm ministering healing but every time something good is about to happen you go to bed and you have a dream some person will come to molest you and the moment you wake up whether it's a job or some opportunity it just leaves in the name of jesus the son of the living god we sever you from the influence of those spirits in the name of jesus christ there is a couple the lord is asking me to minister to the problem affecting fertility is the man this is a problem that is common to men and yours is an acute problem you need a miracle this is not something drugs or supplement can correct you are not able to get your wife pregnant i want you to believe that the power of god is in this place god who quickened the body of abraham that isaac came even by natural means let that power that raised christ from the dead quicken your mortal body now quicken your mortal body now quicken your mortal body now I'm hearing a name Zuera this is a name that I'm hearing Zuera this should be another name in the name of Jesus I pray for that person whether here or online every infirmity I'm saying this is something that has to do with your heart by the power that raised Christ from the dead I bring you life and healing life and healing life and healing life and healing there is a woman God is asking me to pray for we're wrapping up um although this woman is on the big side it is not because of her weight that she's having mobility problems i'm seeing that there is a problem just right here i'm literally feeling the pain from here i'm not a medical doctor i might not be able to give it all the explanation needed but in the name of jesus that pain at your right side is affecting mama's mobility as the church of the lord jesus christ we cause that pain now we cause that pain now we cause that pain now hearing problems be healed now speech problems be healed now i feel set up in my heart to just speak this is not word of knowledge but it's just out of an information i know particularly around europe the case of mental health and autism these two cases is plaguing children particularly in their teenage we stand in faith right from here we are speaking to the nations but particularly we release our faith over the children in europe from nigeria to europe extending to canada america this plague this spirit of mental health destroying people at their productive years we call it by name and we curse it by the god of heaven we curse it by the god of heaven in the name of jesus christ can i declare favor over you hmm. truly there is a grace called favor i want you to convince yourself that there is such a grace and it can rest upon a man it brings systems and structure under pressure and compels men to treat you with benevolence with kindness there are three biblical indices to measure the presence of favor number one unusual kindness when the grace for favor is on you men related and unrelated they are compelled by this grace to show you unusual kindness number two is unusual acceptance acceptance beyond the prejudices of tribe race gender this is what happens when you receive the grace for favor number three is unusual access access this is how you know that the favor of God has rested upon you the Bible says watch this now it says 
in Esther chapter 2 and verse 15, the B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Verse 17 says, And the king loved Esther more than all the virgins. He now placed a royal apparel upon her head and made her queen instead of Vashti. Exodus 3 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty psalms 44 and verse 3 they got not the land in possession by their own sword neither did their arms save them but thou O lord and thy right hand the light of your countenance because thou hast a favor towards them i pray for you standing in partnership with the grace upon the angel in this house i decree and declare from the transforming church to all those who are connected I stand as a privileged steward of this grace in the name that is above all names let this grace for favor let it rest upon you now let it rest upon you now unusual access let it rest upon you from the depth of my spirit I release that grace upon you let it work wonders in your life favor in your career favor in ministry favor in business favor in family even pharaoh must favor you help that woman in the name of jesus hear me by this prayer every door that has been closed over your life i stand upon the grace of the man of god and i speak to that door a fata be open a fata be open a fata be open 2024 hear the word of the lord be open now When Jesus was born, even as a baby, with no ability to help himself, that grace spoke. And the Magi, right from where they were, the Bible says these were adults, and they carried gifts of gold, of frankincense and myrrh. They were taking it to a baby, not an adult. I'm praying for you again. This is an advantage we have in the kingdom. May favor rest upon you. And let it begin to speak from this night in the name of jesus favor that brings establishment favor that connects you to strategic men in the name of jesus ministers of the gospel let favor bring helpers for you helpers of the world in the name of jesus christ this year i forbid you from being alone i forbid you from crying alone in the name of jesus the grace that helped Hagar in the desert. Hagar was crying together with her baby. And when God spoke to her, she looked and saw an oasis springing forth. I declare, the oasis that must spring from your desert, let it begin now. Can we pray? I'm going to request, um, since we're praying on it together, is that fine, Reverend Sam? Okay, please, let me request the ushers. Please bring the prayer requests and then please bring it. Can you guys pour it here? Can you bring them all here? Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom rest on me, rest on me. Let your spirit, spirit of wisdom rest on me, rest on me. Oh, rest on me. Oh. Rest on me, oh, rest on me, spirit of wisdom, rest on me, let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me, let your power, power to prosper, rest on me, rest on me, hallelujah. We are going to pray on this by the grace of God and I remember doing this last year and I'm still going to request again I know this is the transforming church but please allow me request particularly for Reverend Sam to make declarations that grace for influence many of you do not know that penetrating cultures and systems comes with a grace no matter how gifted you are 
our world is bound by tribal ethno-cultural prejudices it takes a grace many times beyond your gift to give you visibility and access beyond the shores of the territory wherein you are domiciled are we together yes the things that you are going to be receiving is from the abundance of the grace and the mercy of God there are many of you here who run corporations but you've not been able to break into certain circles it is not by might it is not by power I have seen many gifted people worship ministers several people I've seen men and women of God sincere with character integrity sound in scripture but the capacity to break beyond the barrier there is an embargo it's a territorial embargo it forces men to look like the spirit of the city it takes grace to lift people and to give you a flight beyond your limitation I have seen people today that in in all honesty reverend Sam sometimes I wonder why are you at this level and these are not people maybe you know they are prepared I hope that one of the graces that we're, we're going to be praying for right now is the grace for visibility the Bible says neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel there are many of you right now you are gifted but you are with the wrong audience the people around you do not have the discernment to appreciate what you carry nor the capacity to reward what you carry you need to be translocated by the spirit to an environment where they have an appreciation for what you carry it is very insulting and frustrating to be gifted and be around the wrong audience they will not place value on what you carry this is what honor is about honor compels men to perceive you correctly as touching your value and to reward you to match the extent of your sacrifice reverend sam <laughs> praise the name of the lord do you believe in the power of agreement we're going to kneel and pray and i want no 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 you don't have to kneel who will do the kneeling for you yours is to receive don't let any spirit distract you these are the kinds of prophetic moments where people's destinies change. And this is where Satan steals into people's focus. And then fools them to be looking around. And then they miss their day of opportunity. Jacob said the Lord was in this place. And I knew not. Begin to pray in the spirit. Reverend Samson. in Jesus name Amen I'd like you to just place your right hand on your head as you pray right now and let me say this the first person to ever walk up to me and say Reverend Sam there's a grace for cross-cultural influence on you was Pastor Kunle Shorinyon, the second person, was Apostle Selman, recognizing that grace. God has been so merciful, we can't even share things in the public. The Bible says he is the one that busts your confinements. From today, whatsoever is the reason for your confinement, it is over. I say the Lord burst your confinements. Servant of God, the Lord burst your confinements. Inside and outside, the Lord burst your confinements. Single lady, single man, the Lord burst your confinements. I decree and declare from today your branches will begin to spread over the walls you are uncontainable from today you are unstoppable from today you are irresistible from today you begin to spread out you begin to move out 
you begin to advance begin to advance break barriers break limitations break obstacle move higher move forward advance progress flourish thrive locally and internationally go to the nations go to the nations your doors are open your gates are open your gates are open in the name of Jesus hallelujah listen to me please listen the greatest way and the most potent way to transfer grace is through words hallelujah words he said if you had known of the dispensation of the oh, grace that yes, was given Lord, unto yes. me for you word given to me for you I want to release the grace for visibility listen to me Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 my God the Bible says and it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God to observe and to do all that I command you this day it says that you shall be exalted above all not some all the nations of the earth from tonight like a candle that has been lit I forbid you from remaining small yes. I forbid you from remaining small may that grace for visibility rest upon you access to the nations of the earth access to the hearts of kings in the name of Jesus right. hallelujah when Saul met with Samuel yes. three things happened Samuel said is it not because the Lord has anointed yes. you to be a captain over his inheritance I pray for you the anointing that makes you a captain the Bible calls it an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows may that grace rest upon you now and Samuel told Saul he said as you return the first thing is restoration that the donkey that has been missing would have been back home yeah. we prophesy that everything you have lost in 2023 we decree and declare yes. let it be a balance brought forward for you yes. in the mighty name of Jesus I speak restoration yes. I speak restoration yes. I speak restoration yes. number two he said you will meet with three men uh, yeah, yeah. each of them holding two loaves. yes sir. they will salute you and they will give, they will to, give you. to you and he says of them receive yes where are your helpers of hey! destiny we decree and declare hey, shakata. from january to shabara. december 2024 shabara. enjoy the ministry shabara. of destiny helpers yes enjoy the ministry of destiny yes! helpers number three it says you will come to the garrison of the Philistines and that the Spirit of God will come upon you and you will begin to prophesy yes. I pray for you yes. the unction that turns you to another man hey. another man in hey. business another man in ministry yes. another man in worship yes. another man in family another life man. let that grace rest upon you yes the grace that makes Abraham Abraham hey. the grace that makes Sarai Sarah the grace that makes Sifa Peter the grace that makes Jacob Israel the grace to become another man receive it in Jesus name hey. my God can I request before we pray on the request here yes. can you stretch your hands towards us the Bible says that God will bless the works of your hands. Ah. Your hand is a symbol of your productivity. Listen, Job said in the days of my youth, ah. when his light, his candle was upon my tabernacle. Yes. You see, there were two kinds of light that Job had. One upon his head and another upon his path. Yes. The one on his head was for illumination. The one on his path was for direction. And the benefit of the light upon his head was seen in the works of his hands. I want to pray for you. Ah. In the name of Jesus, yes. we release our faith. Yes. Nothing dies in your hands. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing dies in your hands. Nothing. Nothing dies in your hands. Yes. Let blessing meet blessing on your hands. Hey. May the Lord make your hands strong. Yes. May the Lord prosper the works of your yes. hands. 
in the name of Jesus. My God. Stretch your hands in this direction, Father. I lift up this request before you. And we ask that you who answers prayer will answer every prayer here. Grant your children their heart's desires. Amen. Let the sick be healed. Amen. Let your doors be open. Return with testimonies of liftings. Your promotion comes early. Your visa granted early. Your project is finished early. The land enters your hands. What you've been waiting for, receive. Your request is granted. Your request is granted. Your joy coming now. Your doors are open. Your favor is granted. Rise to the next level. Rise to the next level. Enter your next dimension. Be supernaturally married. I decree increase on every side. Multiplication. No more delays. No more delays. No more affliction. No more reproach. It is done. Hallelujah. Please allow me to release one more grace before we are done. The greatest investment of the Spirit upon my life is the grace for encounters. The Bible says, blessed is the man that God causes to approach him. You see, if all we receive are just things, we did not receive much. There is a grace that compels men. You see, hunger is a gift. Hunger is proof of health. You're about to receive something very heavy right now. The first thing that happens when a, an individual is sick is the loss of appetite. You use the loss of appetite as a layman's way of diagnosing the presence of sickness. That means when you lose spiritual hunger, it's a sign that something is wrong. And there are people because of the vicissitudes of life, because of the, the challenges, the wear and tear of life, many here have lost their passion. Passion for the things of God, passion for prayer, passion for fasting, passion for the word, They've lost touch with consecration. They've lost touch with all that makes men mighty. We stand in agreement and we pray for you. In the name that is above all names. Yes, Lord. Yes. Fire from heaven. Hey. That reignites your prayer life. Yes. Fire from heaven. Fire. That reignites your word study yes. life. Fire from heaven. Yes. That reignites your passion yes. for God. Receive it now. Hey. Receive it now. Hey. Receive hunger. Yes. Hunger for oh, church. Yes. Hunger for God. Hey. Hunger for the things of God. Hey. Hunger for the study of hey. the word. Hunger for prayer. Hey. In the name of Jesus. Hey. That regardless the level you have attained in the spirit, yes, Lord. I plant in you from tonight a holy dissatisfaction. Hey. Ah, let it drive you to fast. Hey. Let it drive you to pray. Let it drive you to fast. Hey. Let it drive you to pray. Hey. Let it drive you to fast. Hey. Let it drive you to pray. Hey. Let it drive you to study. Hey. Let it drive you to give. Hey. In the name of Jesus. Hey. If Reverend Sam will lend me one more minute, yes. I want to cause mm. the spirit of greed and connection to material things. This may look like an unnecessary prayer, but listen carefully. There are many who do not have because God knows that if he gives them, it will have oh them. Oh my God. Are we together? Yes. My God. God fights everything that takes his place, even if he's the one who gave you. Materialism is not having materials. Materialism is getting to a point where you exalt materials to be the God in your life, replacing the position of the Christ. And this is the tragedy of many believers. Ministry can become an idol. Hey. Yes, sir. Preaching can become an idol. Business can become an idol. Nothing in itself destroys until it is connected to a heart condition that exalts it above God. I want to pray. 
by this prayer a circumcision will happen to someone listen there are many of you God wants to prosper you he wants to open doors but you see the hindrance to your becoming and to your entering the next level is not necessarily demonic is that there is a heart condition God wants to prepare so that when the billions and the millions come when the exaltation and the increase comes you will remember the Lord your God that's what he told the people I pray for you every mundane connection to things that has made you exalt money position titles above and beyond the Christ we dethrone it now we dethrone it now we dethrone it now every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome every high thing must come down every stronghold shall be broken you wear the victor's crown you overcome you overcome finally i declare before i let reverend sam continue by this time next year gilgal 2025 except if you don't plan to be alive but for as long as you plan to be alive I prophesy to you, return 10 times better. Return 10 times better. Spiritually, financially, yes. career-wise. Yes. The 10 times better anointing. Yes. Let it rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. Hey. Give Jesus a big hand of hand clap. Hallelujah. Reverend Sam has given me the permission of a minute or two before I allow him continue to do an altar call. I really believe in salvation. And I want to give someone an opportunity right now to make Jesus. Please, let's keep standing. I know that we've, we've been standing for a while. Let's just honor those who are coming. Um, there's no point cajoling. You need Jesus. You need him now. You need him fast. Hallelujah. The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting life eternal there has to be someone here you're outside you're in this auditorium and for the many following online you're saying apostle reverend sam if you will give me an opportunity i truly want to make it right with jesus and then i'm also calling on those who are saying i want to rededicate my life to jesus i have entered into this new year i do not want it to remain as last year or the years before I truly want to make a sincere, unashamed decision to follow Jesus. Wherever you are, I'll count one to five. I want you to leave your seat, run and come and stand right in front of us here. Do not wait for anyone to be the first. Win that war finally. I begin my counting. One. Let's celebrate them as they come. Two. Young and old, male and female, come. You're outside, please come allow those who are coming if they are coming for the altar call come let's celebrate them don't be tired of clapping three when i count five we begin the prayer for someone who is making this decision by way of television you're following online i want you to participate in the prayer congratulations for your desire to make jesus lord of your life and perhaps you are seated and you're saying apostle i want to come but i'm ashamed afraid of my friend afraid of those seated around me i like you to leave them and come this is the business between you and jesus make your way to the front apostle i'm unsure if i'm saved or not come you can join them and have the assurance of salvation right here right now right here right now right here right now god bless you god bless you god bless you hallelujah Thank you so very much ladies and gentlemen for your bold decision the bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away i salute your courage you are standing before jesus the son of the living god may i please request that you lift your right hand as a sign of surrender high above your head and say this after me as loud and as clear as you can say lord jesus lord jesus one more time say lord jesus lord jesus tonight tonight i have heard your word i have heard your word i declare i declare that i love you that i love with you. all my heart with all my heart i believe i believe that you are the son of god 
God. That you are the son of I believe God. I believe that you died for my sin. That you died for my I believe, sin. I believe that you rose again that you rose for, my again for my justification. Right now, right now I, receive I receive Jesus into my heart, into my heart as, my Savior, as my Savior, my Lord, my Lord and, my King. and my King. I declare, I declare that the power of, of sin satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight i am a child of god i go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you because your word declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away by the authority of your word and upon their confession of faith we declare their sins forgiven in jesus name we call you bona fide recipients of the life of God, the empowerment to live a victorious Christian life we release upon you right now. We call you the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, may I request that you please move to my right, my left, that will be your right. There are counselors who will have a word with you very, very quickly and then you will be back. To your seat let's give them a big big god bless you thank you hallelujah reverend sam thank you oh. thank you sincerely thank you the transforming church may god bless you happy 2024 please everybody please let's remain standing no movement take it down one of the mysteries one of the mysteries of the heavens we have committed ourselves to doing that this is called gilgal is a place of the rolling away of reproach and god has been so faithful to us from the beginning of this program till date so much so much released on us i think you need to go and spend time over the weekend please no fasting tomorrow just use the time to just play the messages and just listen to them okay some of you have fasted crazy this week like you're gonna die stay alive amen all right, I want to do something for three set of people here. I want, to, I want to have the man of God pray for us. I will not let him go. You know, when I was coming here, I don't know why the Lord just dropped in my heart a particular amount in my heart. The Lord just told me, take it. And it happens to me every year. So my year always begins in Gilgal. My financial year always begins in Gilgal. And I can't tell you what God has done for me. I was sharing with one of the pastors last year after the meeting the lord laid on our heart my wife and i just to be with apostle on behalf of me and my family just to put something in his hands i can tell you what god did in 2023 it's 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 the way it works no matter what anybody says out there the less is blessed by the greater it's just no abraham when melchizedek began to say you are blessed of the most high god abraham did not just say amen the bible said quickly call his servant he said don't just say amen to this kind of prayer he said everything we have now let's take a portion of it and let's not let this man of god go let us sow into this atmosphere this is not merchandising anything this is the principle of the kingdom stand this is not time to sit down this is not a year to be poor you, you can't afford poverty this year. Already there's so much poverty in town. We need to function by superior principles to set us apart. There are businesses that need to scale new heights this year. And business owners. There are ministries and ministers that need to scale new heights. Whether it's a thousand dollars God put in your heart, a million naira, more than that whatever it is everyone who wants please apostle can we have you upstairs sir? i just want you to pray sorry my wife will come on be on our behalf see i i believe i believe in the thousand dollars i believe that but when i was coming today the lord said to me take two more for every single month the lord said to me here yeah, 12. i want everyone who is saying pastor I am sowing into this season. I will flourish this year. I will thrive. I will go international. My business will scale new heights. I will break boundaries. I am busting confinement. I carry favor on my life this year. Every one of us, 
who is saying, I see myself. This is where it all begins in Gilgal. Quickly, whatever God is putting on your mind, please at your level, God is speaking to you at your level. There will be no death in your camp. See, we don't need to preach too much. Those who know what God is saying, you just leave your seat immediately. The spirit of materialism leave you. Listen, let me tell you this. Hold on. There are some of you here, for the first time in your life, do something you have never done. Give something you've never given. Just break the barrier. Just break it. There are people watching me here where God is taking your business to this year. If I'm hearing in my spirit, there will be no death in your organization. The Lord is saying to me, every attempt to bring your organization down this year, the adversary will be coming too late. The adversary will be coming too late. Please be very clear. If it's not something you have here, but you're going to do it between now and Sunday, you want to go and get, some of you want to go to the nations, but you're not sowing to the nations. There are some of you trusting God for positions, offices. And you're like, God, I want to sit in that office. These things don't come just cheaply. The people contending with you, you have no idea what they're offering. I didn't need to cajole you. You understand the message. You understand what you are doing. Quickly find your way down here. I want you to quietly bow your heart before the Lord and tell the Lord what you are doing. Tell him what you're giving. Some of you already came with it. Some of you came prepared. God bless you. Some of you came prepared. If you're writing a check, write it in the name of the transforming church. Write it. We're going we're gonna to reach out to God's servant in our own very special way. Everyone online, they're going to put account details on the screen. Please make sure you take advantage of that. Everyone watching online, you want to be a part of what God is doing here. I will turn it over to Apostle so he can pray over the people of God. This year must be different. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Praise the name of the Lord. I want you to believe in what you are doing because it works. Some of us sadly may have been victims of manipulations from men, women of God, unfortunately. Some of us may have given, but not with understanding, and it did not bring any profit in. But I want you to know that this is how it works. Let God be true, and all men liars. There is no other way it works. When God wanted many sons, he gave his son. The most important thing is that you do what you do out of revelation. This is a church of integrity, and I love Reverend Sam. I believe what we're doing. I want to speak over your seats. Hallelujah. I want to speak over your seats and I want you to believe. You will marvel and wonder at what God does. Yes. This is a grace that we have received though. I say this sincerely. God's grace can rest upon you even in the area of your finances. And you will marvel and wonder at the things that God does. Father, the Bible says, you don't have to kneel, you just stand. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8, it says, and God is able to make all grace are bound towards you so that ye having sufficiency in all things that you are bound to every good work mm. the spirit of god is able to bless you beyond finances because there are some of you the truth is that your challenge is not finances god is able to give your seed another body you can sow a seed and reap favor you can sow a seed and reap healthy children it is true therefore in the name of jesus i stand in faith with god's servant for the many who are here in front, the many who yes. are connecting online, yes, Father, you are not a fraudster. You do not defraud men. Yes, Lord. We stand upon the integrity of Scripture. Your people have responded. Some of them are bringing their sacrifices. Some of them are bringing their all. I pray in the name of Jesus, the waster by this giving is rebuked over your life. The waster is rebuked over your life. In the name of Jesus, I give your seeds a voice in the realm of the spirit. I command it to gather its kind and to return to you a thousandfold. The level with which you are given now, that will be your least level. You will rise in the spirit by the favor of God. In the name of Jesus, we put systems and structures under pressure. That God will cause men to deal with you favorably. Some of you, by this giving, you will go to bed and God will give you ideas. God will show you things to do. 
God will connect you strategically to opportunities. But by all means, in the name of Jesus, let your giving return to you. Press down, shaken together, running over, in the name of Jesus. I bless your seeds, I bless your heart, I bless your harvest, and I bless you. In Jesus' amen. mighty and matchless name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Amen and amen. We have to do this fast. The Spirit of God wants to bring so much within the time that we have. And um, praise the name of the Lord. So I set the stage for my dear friend and brother, Pastor Jerry, to also have the opportunity to share. Could you help me on the sound? Thank you. Hallelujah. Please help me honor Pastor Lanre. God bless you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Um, we do the things that we do because we love Jesus. And then we love people. Hallelujah. Amen. It's an honor to spend and be spent for Jesus. This is why he's granted the grace. And so truly, I consider it an honor to be here. Hallelujah. And then please, please do help me. It was a pleasant surprise seeing him also. Reverend Edwin, all the way from House on the Rock, and who give him a big God bless you. Is this how you honor Reverend? Amen. Let's pray. Father, we ask that you reveal your word to us tonight. In the name of Jesus, let your word come with power. Grant us understanding. That after tonight, we truly will begin to walk in power and walk in authority. Tonight, we declare that there is the hearing of faith and even the walking of miracles. And to Jesus be all the glory. Amen and amen. I saw so many people outside. I was so humbled. Those in the, I don't know which of the overflows. That's them shouting. Blessings to you. Please be seated. Amen. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. There are things you only find in the house of the Lord. You cannot find it in a bank. You cannot find it in a school. Among the many things that the church does is that it is the cheapest institution for transformation. All other institutions have very strict requirements like age range, regional quotas but all it takes to be changed by god through the church is your availability there are no age restrictions no gender biases no pre-qualifications all that is required is your hunger and your presence hallelujah and so i want us to pay attention as i set the stage for the mighty things that god is going to be doing tonight i'm teaching on authority power and jurisdiction authority power and jurisdiction it's going to be a brief charge and then we'll pray authority power and jurisdiction please lend me your attention the average christian's understanding about power and authority is vague and largely inaccurate just listen for a minute and then we'll continue. The average Christian's understanding as far as the subject of authority and power is concerned is largely vague and inaccurate. Most believers know instinctively or perhaps by reason of being in church that the believer has been given power, the believer has been given authority. But in truth, most believers are at a loss as to what that even means. Hallelujah. It is true from scripture that we have been given power and that we have been given authority. Jesus himself made very profound statements attesting to the fact that the believer in Christ has an advantage of power and advantage of authority. Are we together? But then having that information is not enough for us to walk in the experience of power. It will take going beyond just the awareness that we have been given power to actually walk in power. So I, to set the stage tonight, my first assignment is to redefine 
certain terminologies because we need to be on the same page as to the idea of power and authority are you ready let's define power what exactly is power as far as the business of the kingdom is concerned here are my definitions number one power is the capacity to influence outcomes power is the capacity to influence outcomes whoever sustains the capacity to influence outcomes has power the capacity to influence outcomes number two still defining power the force that compels compliance this is my definition of power the force that compels compliance hallelujah are we together in physics the first law of mechanics as postulated by sir isaac newton says that everybody remains in its uniform motion or state of rest except compelled by an external force to act otherwise am i right on that that means if i keep this and i leave it here theoretically it should remain in this state if it does shift then a force greater than what is keeping it must have been exerted so power is defined as the force that compels compliance capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance is my definition of power you have that down let's define authority this will be very in authority means the right to represent number one the right to represent the right to represent number two authority is the legitimacy to use power authority is defined as the legitimacy to use power so while power talks of capacity to influence outcomes authority is the legitimacy to use power if you have power and you do not have authority you have a right the government can arrest you for instance what is the difference between an armed robber holding a gun and a military man holding a gun both of them have power but only one has authority are we learning already so authority is the right to use power before the realm of the spirit respects your use of power it must verify that you have authority there are many people who have authority but they do not have power hmm. are we learning already now authority always comes with a predefined jurisdiction please let me have your attention it is impossible to give someone the legitimacy to use power indefinitely every time you grant authority you must define jurisdictions am i correct yes there is nobody who is given power without jurisdiction the strength of authority is that it is it is you you walk the authority within a predefined jurisdiction are we learning already because most believers are only power conscious and they do not know that there is a jurisdiction to the use of the believers power we do not have power everywhere for instance the throne room there is a limit the believer does not have indefinite absolute power the power and the authority that we have has jurisdictions are we learning now let's now define jurisdiction remember we're doing i'm being very elementary we're just doing definitions so we've defined power authority now jurisdiction jurisdiction is the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal jurisdiction please put that down represents the sphere where the use of power is allowed jurisdiction represents the sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal so as much as a military man has authority his authority is defined by a code of conduct am i right on that and there are jurisdictions he cannot walk into your house for no cause and no reason and just shoot you down so there has to be jurisdiction are we together now let me go straight to the point there are a few things 
that we need to understand as far as the administration of power is concerned number one man does not have absolute power no man was never given absolute power only god has absolute power listen carefully the power that man has is derived and is limited that is the reason why power can increase and power can reduce god does not increase power he does not reduce power because he has absolute power you need to understand this these are the fundamentals of administering true spiritual power man was not given absolute power only god has absolute power and in fact is the exclusive owner of all power god does not just have absolute power based on scripture he is the exclusive owner let's look at two scriptures first chronicles 29 11 is god helping someone already first chronicles 29 and 11 the bible says yours O lord is the greatness and the power and the glory the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours yours is the kingdom O lord and you are exalted above all scripture number two second chronicles chapter 20 from verse 5 and 6 this was a prayer that jehoshaphat was praying then jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of judah and jerusalem in the house of the lord before the new court verse 6 and he said O lord god of our fathers are you not god in the heavens and do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the earth and in your hand is there not power and might so that there is none that is able to withstand you only god god almighty has absolute power are we learning already if you're with me shout a loud amen. amen all right are you ready for the next surprise god almighty does not have authority god cannot have authority the nature of authority is that someone higher than you must confide upon you listen carefully god does not have authority the law of authority is that you must be under authority to have authority the centurion said for i am a man under authority and then I also have other people under me. On the strength of that law, I say to one, go. And he goeth. If God has authority, there must be someone he must be obedient to. And he, there must be someone he must worship. There are certain things God cannot do. For instance, he cannot be obedient. It is not in his character. Who will he obey? Are you learning now? Because there are many believers who want the realm of the spirit to respect them and with this maze of misinformation and confusion we speak to demons and we hope that they listen we speak to situations and circumstances no the power of god is administered upon the strength of knowledge god does not have authority he only gives authority are we learning god almighty does not have authority ladies and gentlemen he only gives authority. The law of authority, I, I, I told you earlier on, is that there must be someone higher than you who gives you that authority and supervises your compliance. Every time you give authority to someone lower than you, automatically you have the power to supervise their compliance. If they default, you withdraw it. Hallelujah isaiah 40 my goodness now you will worship him with understanding the one who only has power with no authority isaiah 40 14 isaiah 40 14 with whom did he take counsel and who instructed him who taught him in the path of justice who taught him knowledge and who showed him the way of understanding there is no one this is how great God is that he does not have the ability to obey and he does not have the ability to have authority it cannot be he searched for a man greater than him he was willing to humble himself to such a God if there were any and not finding any he swore by himself 
that by this two immutable counsel it is impossible for God to lie do you know what that means if God says I will bless you there is no other force that threatens that word listen let me teach you something about authority in the court we have customary court we have high court am i right on that and they all have jurisdictions have you seen that there are certain courts that cannot pass certain uh what do we call it now talk to me lawyers they can't pass certain judgments because they say it is beyond their jurisdiction they have authority but it must be supervised the highest of them in any nation is called the supreme court am i right on that and when the supreme court makes a statement whether you agree or not as far as that jurisdiction is concerned it is over hmm. so i can say i want to bless you but if someone higher than me perhaps the one who gave me the legitimacy to use that power refuses i become helpless even though i am sincere so when God speaks, what makes his word powerful is not just that he is God, it's because he's the only one. Are we learning now? Can we pray in the spirit for one minute? We are redefining things. For someone, God is already giving you understanding. Hallelujah. Are we together now? So let's recap on everything we've said. We define power. We define authority. We define jurisdiction. And now we're establishing a few things that will guide our understanding. That man does not have absolute power. Only God has absolute power and is the exclusive owner. He was not given. He is the owner. I have spoken once. And twice have you heard that power that includes the power that is used by witchcraft and all of that <laughs> you just listen God operates the power of God operates at three levels I don't have the time the highest dimension of his power is derived through intimacy are we together you will have to encounter God directly by his spirit to have that dimension of power the second level of god's power is hidden in principles you don't need a relationship to activate that dimension you only need knowledge so you can reject god as a person and refuse intimacy with him but understand the principles are we together now it was designed to be activated the moment the laws are adhered to regardless of relationships that is the dimension where demonic forces and they only manipulate the laws of the spirit there is already a default manifestation of power it is an abuse of power the third dimension of power happens through covenant alignment you don't have to be powerful you just need to believe and connect to the one who has power are we together are we learning now so if you ever see whether it is the power used in occultism, whether it's the power used in any, provided you see anything that can tame creation, it is power. It belongs to God, even though it was abused. If someone steals your money and drinks with it, you are not a drunkard. It's your money, but it was abused. But it does not stop the fact that it was your money that was stolen. Am I right on that? Yes. So just because it is God's power being abused does not mean it is not his power. It is his power. It is only that he's been abused. Because one day he will withdraw it. If it was not his power, he would not have the right to withdraw it. Is it not in your Bible that Satan, hell, the grave, all will be cast into the lake of fire? Who then withdraws their power? Even the Spirit said, have you come to destroy us before our time? They are aware that there's one, the owner. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness. That means everything that finds itself in the earth belongs to him. The walls and then they. It didn't say the men that dwell there. Whoever is in the earth is still God's property. And one day he will show his absolute owner. Are we learning? I assume that your quietness means you are learning. <laughs> It's amazing how believers want to walk in power but remain in ignorance.
just learning already that God does not have authority gives it builds your faith nobody confers it upon him so when God speaks that's like the Supreme Court saying done every other court has to bow that is the power in his word if there were many gods and he was just the greatest there will be trouble if there were many gods equal to him and he's just the wisest out of them there will be trouble but there is none in his class are we together every once in a while we had kings upon the earth who made themselves gods we had all kinds of demons who deceived people that they were god and usually it is god's system that all through history a time will come where he will shout from heaven and remind people for instance nebuchadnezzar when he turns him to become an animal still with the brain of a man it is to make a statement that there is a god that rules over the affairs of men i'm saying that because everything god has said to you that you are wondering will it come to pass that means you are saying there is a power higher than him that may stop it no the moment you believe that god's word does not come to pass i personally consider it sin against god you are saying he lied that he does not possess authority let god be true and all men liars now to walk in dominion you must have both power and authority now you understand what i'm saying that to walk in dominion the force to create that compliance whether economic power in this case spiritual power you must do you know that the money in your pocket is nigeria's property hello You've forgotten let me remind you that the money in your pocket and the one in your bank provided you are holding paper it is written there it does not belong to you you are using it but it is nigeria's property amazing how this thing works the land that you are building on you bought it but in truth based on an agreement you are not even aware of because you were too happy to read and you just signed it it says after 99 years they hope that you'll be dead by then. The devil is a liar. You will live long. Say amen. amen. Shout a louder amen. amen. Yeah. <laughs> so to walk in dominion, you must need power and authority. Luke 10, 19. You will understand that statement now. Luke chapter 10 and verse 19. My spiritual life changed when I understood the things that I'm sharing with you. And believe me, when it comes to this subject of power, I know something a bit about it may not know everything but there are a few things we know hallelujah the bible says behold i give you now even new king james does not get it right the only version that really gets what jesus said is amplified give us amplified king james says power new king james says authority i respect them but both of them are wrong this is what jesus said behold i have given you authority and power to trample upon serpents and scorpions do you notice that the moment he mentioned authority jurisdiction came he defined what you are to have authority over this is a law that was respected right from genesis 1 28 the moment god gives men authority let them have dominion he did not stop there over and he defined everything you should have dominion over behold i give you authority and i give you power are we together and he says on account of that nothing when you understand that you have authority and you have power nothing shall by any means hurt you this is profound so we know from scripture that man has been given power and with power he's been given authority do you know why authority is important because there is a god god in heaven higher than you who supervises your administration of that power and supervises the obedience of creation while you administer that power so if i tell one go and it does not go it is not my responsibility to defend that statement the power was received the authority was conferred the owner of the power and the one who gave me the authority will have to defend his name as touching that disobedience when you understand this your ego gets out of the way because it is god's business to bring confirmation are we learning now otherwise how will you ever stand before a dead body and ask it to come back to life have you ever stood before a dead body that did not move 
honestly that's when you will know that God was wise to say get out of the way and allow me the, to be the one who confirms the word there are cases that when you see humanly speaking health issues economic situations using the lens of a man you would not even want to dare those things because you will be embarrassing yourself and creating a negative memorial forever people will remember you and say no this person you are as powerless as whatever but what gives you the audacity is that i have power i have authority and there is one who stands behind me as a mighty terrible one authority hallelujah what were we given authority over let me talk a bit about jurisdiction and then we'll pray genesis 1 28 you need to study the jurisdiction for the administration of your power the power god has given you and god blessed them and said be fruitful multiply fill the earth and subdue it it says have dominion over number one the fish of the sea it doesn't mean fish no it's, it's a way of showing realms so it uses whatever creature that represents that realm when it says the fish of the sea it does not mean fish are we together it means that domain then he talks of the birds of the air the air he talks of every living thing that moves upon the earth we are given that jurisdiction satan is called the prince of the power of the air he's not talking about this air it's a spiritual location are we together now this is very important number two matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 what is the believer given power over authority over let's examine from scripture and when he had called the 12 disciples to him he gave them power over help me on clean spirit you don't have power over every spirit no you don't have power over verify the spirit is unclean first so that you stop commanding things anyhow and then you are embarrassed you are not given power over the spirits of men it's called manipulation because the spirits of men especially men in christ are also holy spirits it's just that the holy spirit is the most holy spirit <laughs> are you learning now we are defining jurisdiction you see that sincere believers make mistakes and sometimes we command the holy spirit we command all, and sometimes god just moves because he knows our ignorance versus our sincerity of heart but it doesn't mean that what we are doing and saying is right no you are given power over before you act you want that spirit to obey you verify it is unclean what it what makes it unclean it's rebellion against the laws of god are we together yeah do you know why you cannot call a human spirit unclean even if the man is not saved because he has an opportunity to be saved demons don't so it's been verified that they are unclean spirits there is no possibility of salvation for them but for a man who may be Saul today, he can be Paul tomorrow. So even in that state, the blood still advocates. Even until he steps into the experience of salvation. I wish I had time. This is, I promise you a charge. I promise you a charge. I'm, I'm, I'm creating the stage for Pastor Jerry to come and then bless you. I think if I do this, I've, I've done well tonight. I would have helped someone with his understanding. Are we together? Oh, let God arise and let my enemies be scattered. No, he never said your enemies. He said his enemies. Hold on. Do you know what it means to be God's enemy? Let me define God's enemy for you. Whoever perpetually becomes a hindrance to the manifestation of his will, including you, becomes his enemy. Whoever becomes a perpetual hindrance to the manifestation of his will so before you pray that prayer you have to examine yourself that you are not praying against yourself when the captain of the of the lord's army came to joshua is it not in your bible he said are you for us or against us and he said neither i don't work like that whoever is accomplishing the will of god for that moment even if he cyrus becomes my ally as far as god is concerned you will be learning i'm going ahead of myself because that's where we're going to stop <laughs> goodness we have power 
over creation. We have power over unclean spirits. Are we still together? Number three, we have power to change negative circumstances. Matthew 8, 27. We have power to change negative circumstances, negative conditions, as we see in the life of Jesus. The Bible says this was the, the wind. And remember the, 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 the storm, the boisterous storm at sea? The Bible says, so when the, then the men marveled, saying, who can this be that even the winds and the sea obey him? King James says, what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him? So we have power not just over animate things as we know. We also have the power to manipulate with respect to the will of God even in animate things and conditions that is the reason why i can speak to a negative condition around your life it is not a life but it can still hear because it was created the elements that formed that problem were elements that god created for instance men for instance spirits are we together if a man decides to promote you the lack of promotion is a problem but it was caused by someone god created are we together now and if it becomes a hindrance to his will i'm able to declare by the spirit of god that that circumstance will change listen if you understand this your spiritual life will be so powerful because you will know how to partner with the holy spirit you'll be learning shortly that the holy spirit does not partner carelessly he verifies the will of god as the basis of his partnership if the will of god is not found in that program the holy spirit will not be part of it wow could it be why many prayers are not answered? Is it not in your Bible? And this is the confidence that we have that when we ask anything according to his will, not our desires, according to his will, what is God's will? Whatever he says. God's will is whatever he says because where the power of God is, is where his voice and his word has gone to. Genesis 21 and verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said not as she wanted and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken if he has said it and he has spoken that becomes the assignment of power I'm going ahead of myself but we need to understand the purpose of power any kind of power the assignment of power is to bring all things to the will of God that's it so before the power of God acts it has to first verify especially if it is corrective is that current condition the will of God? If not, it begins to change that person or change that situation until it becomes the will of God. Then it stops working. You also know at what point the power of God stops working when the will of God is established. That means if the will of God is not yet established in your life, I assure you the power of God is still working. Are we learning now? Very profound, fundamental spiritual truths. This is how Jesus taught the disciples to have power. He did not just give them power. Do you know the disaster they would have become if the only thing they were from fishermen to impartation to commissioning, the gospel would not cross one city. He took out time. This was what he was teaching them. When they were now full of light, then power came. Are we together? That is the reason why when the apostles saw the damsel, remember? The damsel that had the spirit of divination. He didn't act carelessly. He had to verify whether it was the will of God or not. It took time. He needed to discern. Because he knew that the power of God does not act outside. Or against the will of God. And when he discovered that even though her prophecy was right. The spirit behind it was not of God. He had the legitimate ground because we were given power over unclean spirits. Is someone learning? Unclean spirits. So if I sit down and I call for pastor's money, whether he likes it or not, to come to me, you see that there is a problem there. It is not the money. It is the fact that stealing does not allow... Are we together? Rather than saying pastor's money will come to me, here is what happens. You call on the mystery of favor. Favor works with his will. That is an engracing of the spirit. God will make him like me. Are we together now? And he will release it freely. 
because in the kingdom even at the expense of your eternal destiny God does not force you to receive him there are people going to hell today in spite of the fact that they will be condemned forever God still respects their will they reject him and he says I respect you go to hell I respect you I mean go to hellfire not not go to hell as an insult are we together house on the rock <laughs> what is the assignment of power and authority Matthew 6 and verse 10 I'm praying that someone got what I said tonight Matthew 6 and verse 10 let's read it together ready one to read thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven this is why God gave us power Every time you pray and fast and roll on the ground for power, make sure you understand this scripture and confess it too. Otherwise, your fasting will be a waste. Otherwise, your praying will be a waste. God does not respond to emotions and sentiments. He responds to your understanding and the purity of your desire to achieve this goal. So why do I come asking that God will impart more grace? Because I want to be equipped with the power and the authority that helps me to enforce his will on the earth. What is his will? I told you what he has said. What he has said. There are many things God has said. Let me give you an example. That you shall be the head and not the tail. That is a statement that the power of God has been searching for who believes and who will come into partnership with that power to make happen. If I come to you as a man of God and say in the name of Jesus, I declare you are the head. I am in the will of flow freely, unhindered to bring that word to pass. Are we together? If I pray for your loved ones to be saved and I say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare by the anointing of the Spirit of God that these ones will go everywhere in the name of Jesus Christ. Immediately, watch this, immediately the power of God because it is God's will that all men be saved. Every time you see abuse of power is because understanding of its purpose was not established. If God gives me prophetic power, the ability to see now, if God reveals pastor's account number, for instance, just as an example, and then my lost can partner with that power, and I can now prophesy the account and say, on account of that, withdraw X, Y, Z, and send to me. I have abused power. Why was it an abuse? Because the will of God was not established in that program. That means you can be anointed, and yet your love life is not in place. That is the reason why even faith works by love. So even though we have the power to compromise, but we constrain ourselves as proof that we love God and we administer power only within the jurisdiction of God's will. Listen, if you know this as a man of God, you will be excellent in your administering power. You will see that God continues to back you up because your life and your ministry becomes so dexterous. God knows that every time you show up, it is to bless people. Every time you show up, it is that his will will be done. Are we together now? So if the sick are healed, it's more than just a verification that a man is anointed. It is that his will has come to pass. If God gives you revelatory power as a man of God, and you now use it to open people up, enlighten them, bring them to an understanding like I'm bringing to you now. Are you seeing that now? Once your heart is committed, listen, it is one of the greatest secrets I learned in my work of power with God. The moment your heart becomes pegged at making the will of God to be manifest through your life, you have truly entered the realm of genuine power, economic power, power manifesting as influence, power for signs and wonders. Are we learning now? So many, many believers desire power without authority. God, just give me power. I don't know you. I don't care about you. I hear that you can give men things that make, and God says, no. The possibilities of the flesh in your life are too many to give you power unsupervised. That is why he, he, he connected the power to your yieldedness. Look up. Look at me, please. Are we learning? 
spiritual power is tied to the yieldedness of the individual the degree to which you are yielded is what is responsible for the increase of power because that means that you are ready to subscribe to authority and to work within jurisdiction so when two people come and stand here and manifest different possibilities it is not because it's a different god are we together it is a reflection our differences even in administering spiritual power is a product of our yieldedness yieldedness someone can pray for someone on a wheelchair and nothing happens and another person may not even pray and then he rises up from the wheelchair the difference is that degree of power that degree of presence which is a measure of the degree of yieldedness who is learning tonight hallelujah are you seeing that it is safe for many christians to not have power that god's refusing to give certain people power is an act of his mercy for your sake because the possibilities that are locked up within them there will be a disaster to his program and even to your health if they have access to power without an understanding of authority today america and Europe with all due respect are battling a violation of this principle giving people access to power whether as guns are we together whether as the right to execute their will without authority it will always produce disaster economically politically when you give people power and then do not give them authority I know someone who bought a car for uber bolt no bolt uber and then gave this guy to to help him after many months the person did not bring any money he will give a flimsy excuse the tire spoiled this one spoiled and the man decided to buy something i can't remember the name you put a tracker that's authority now it will force that driver to behave so the driver must be yielding returns not because he's a good man but now he has been forced by a system called a tracker are we together can i tell you you know how powerful you are in this kingdom to the degree to which you are constrained by authority you see independence in our world is proof of maturity the degree to which you do not need anybody however reverse is the case in the spirit that the ones who are powerful and mighty are the ones who are constrained by authority so the centurion said i am a man under authority and on account of that i have soldiers under me are we together i say to one go and he goeth to another come and he cometh and he said jesus speak the word only you need not come to my house because i know you are a man under authority i know the law of authority because you are you became a man jesus only manifested authority when he became a man i told you god does not have authority but when God became a man, he had to submit to the authority system too. That was why as a reward for his submission, God highly exalted him. Are we together now? And gave him a name that is above every other name. And gave him, and gave him, and gave him, and gave him because he submitted. And gave him. Hallelujah. Is someone learning? So when you stand before spirits and you say in Jesus name I don't want to see you go while you are shouting they are just watching you. Do you know why they don't go? I will tell you. It's not just because you are more or less anointed. No. No. I wish we had time I would have shown you how to use the authority. I may not be able to cover that in this discussion. Maybe another time. At least you know the jurisdiction now. Don't pray against the spirit of a man. No. You can ask God. It is God who is called the father of spirits. You know what that means? He's the originator. Is the Greek word patar. The Hebrew is Abba. The originator of all spirits. That means it is within his power and with respect to him, it is not illegal to manipulate any human spirit. Even if he's Pharaoh, he will make Pharaoh to give his slaves gold. The father of spirits for you. Now, it is this understanding that constructs your prayer life. Because one of the ways we execute power in the kingdom is in prayer. Are we learning now? One of the ways we execute power in the kingdom is in prayer. Help me appreciate, Pastor Jerry.
Prayer is a platform that gives you the allowance to manifest spiritual power. Is someone learning? This is very, very powerful. So you don't, in prayer, it is this understanding that constructs your prayer life because there is something called praying amiss. What makes prayer powerful is the word compliancy of that prayer. What makes prayer, listen carefully, powerful is the word compliancy the degree to which that prayer aligns with the word of god because i told you god's power only follows what he says are we learning yeah so when you see prayer producing results it is because the word of god has been connected to that prayer and it will commit god's power to bring to pass but it's important to understand so we've been given power over elemental forces the sea the air the earth are we together now this is very powerful there are certain oh dear, there are certain dimensions of power that was given to all men not believers for instance a farmer does not need to be a Christian to draw the power of God that is deposited in the earth I told you that there are three levels of God's power the highest dimension of God's power is attracted through intimacy. You must encounter him to have that dimension of power. The second dimension of power is hidden in principles. It is not relational. It, it is a function of light. Are we together? If you know it, whether as a businessman, whether as a politician, you can build a great nation, even though a godless nation like Babylon. God respected the building of Babylon. They used his very power to build something that was against his will. And yet the nation of Israel as anointed as they were, they could not build anything till David arrived. You read the story. They had encounters, but they did not understand the power enshrined in principles. And it was David that gave stability and establishment to God's people. Power over unclean spirits. Verify that a spirit is unclean before you rebuke it. There are many, many spirits that are clean. A human spirit, saved or unsaved, cannot be called an unclean spirit because Jesus died for everyone and there is hope for he that is joined to the living. That means a man who is Saul today can become Paul tomorrow. So you still cannot rebuke the man even though he's unsaved. You can only pray for his salvation. Unclean spirits are spirits that have been verified by God's verdict that there is no salvation for them. It is for such that when you administer the power of God in the name, in the name of Jesus, they live. I give you power over unclean spirits. Are we following? Find somewhere to wrap up now. Then you have power, like I said, over situations and circumstances. And now, it is, I told you that everything that has to do with the administration of power, please do not forget this, is with respect to the will of God. Because if someone is saying rain, stop, and another person is saying, Lord, send rain, I need to eat. You see that there are two people who are in conflict. So I am praying right now and say, Father, please bring rain in Port Harcourt. This year I must eat. My children will not die of hunger. If another person is saying, Lord, let rain stay because I'm anointed, as sincere as those things are the one that will be answered is not the one who prays more it is the one who partners with the will of God for that moment everything in the kingdom revolves within the sphere of the will of God if you remove the will of God out his power has no ministry the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into his will are we together the moment you are outside of the will of God, the power of God has no ministry. It is the reason why the power follows the word. Because the word of God is the clearest revelation of his will. So before I pray for the sick, there must be an understanding. I don't need to recite it to his hearing. It's a consciousness. What is the basis of that person getting healed? Is it consistent with the will of God? That is how I know, not by feelings. I don't have to feel anointed. This is an issue of integrity here. So I know that it is God's desire for that man to be healed. And now I can pray for that person believing that the power of God will follow his will. Can I tell you, many believers 
have their lives in shambles because they do not respect the will of God so they cannot see the power of God they are fasting against the will of God they are praying against the will of God it's him Jesus said father let me show you Jesus the greatest manifesto of the power of God if it be thy will or he said take this cup off me it says nevertheless ah, because if I find myself in disalignment to your will I can no longer be called the word of God I hope he knew he was tempted in every way so he could have lost that status as the word of God he was not just called the word of God because he was a word incarnate it was because he ensured that his life was always in sync with the will of God now he had a chance to be thinking differently from what God wanted to do but he said nevertheless not my will but yours be done never the least in fact here's what he said my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and finish it can I tell you the greatest people who will manifest the power of God in this end time are those who will pay the price to know the will of God looking for power is useless until you understand the will of God because the assignment of the power of God is to bring all things into the will of God then to execute the will of God to make it happen hallelujah is it God's will for me to prosper I check from scripture if that is true then I know for a fact that there must be a dimension of his power allocated for bringing that will to pass it is now my assignment to find out I'm not in doubt it is no longer will God bless me it is finding out how every time listen oh dear do we have time I have to give us a Jerry room to come and preach but let me teach you something The moment the will of God is about to come to pass in your life, watch this. The power of God will also depend on the wisdom of God. If the wisdom of God is not revealed, the power of God cannot work accurately. Watch this. Please listen to me. It is the wisdom of God that guides the operation of the power of God to make it manifest profitably. The Bible says to the Greeks, Christ is revealed. Christ, the anointing, is revealed as the wisdom of God and the power of God. So when God wants to help a man to truly walk in power, even if you pray for power alone, it's two things that will arrive in your life. Power and wisdom. Wisdom is what gives value to the correct use of power. Are we together now? Because the dynamics of operating power is that until you have wisdom, you cannot let me show you then we'll pray Ephesians chapter 2 please give us from verse 16 Paul is praying let's see the content of his prayer Ephesians chapter 1 in fact verse 16 1 chapter 1 please Ephesians 1 and verse 16 can you give it to us thank you he says I cease not he's praying now to give thanks for you making mention of you in my prayers what is the content of the prayer 17 help us media that the god of our lord jesus christ watch this the father of glory may give unto you what is the first thing that whole journey will end in power but he said he will give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him next verse please the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that ye may know what is the hope of his calling number one number two what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints shout verse 3 together please ready one to read and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe according to the working of his mighty power the bible says according as his divine power have given us all things that pertain unto life and godliness but the administration is through the knowledge hallelujah wisdom the wisdom of God is very powerful many people have prayed for power but they have not prayed for wisdom so they have the power but then they are not able to manifest power and authority because there is no wisdom do you know that even if Elijah Elisha prayed over the woman remember the woman in, in uh, second Kings now hallelujah the wife of the sons of the prophet do you know that even though he prayed for her if he had spoken prophetically over her and there was no wisdom she still would have remained in debt it was the prophetic word that made her to even go and find vessels to borrow 
in the first place. If he did not prophesy, nobody would give her any vessel. It was not a product of her creativity. And then she comes and he gives her a strategy. That is wisdom. Now I've released power up for multiplication. But the power depends on vessels, capacity. You see, this is the reason why those who are not enlightened, if you impart power over them, they will look like they are fake. Because the use of the power is not with wisdom. Have you seen somebody with all due respect manifest power and somehow you, you are, you are, there is no wisdom gives beauty to the use of power. Are we together now? Yes. It is the mistake if you study the history of the church in Nigeria. This was the mistake. Many fathers with all due respect to them, some dead and have gone to be with the Lord. They prayed and they accessed power. But many of them did not access wisdom through the word. So, they, in administering power, they brought many things that were prophetic experiences and made doctrine out of them. Because wisdom was not there to separate personalized dealings and things that were doctrines. Are we learning now? So, when you have the power of God and you have the wisdom of God, you will manifest dominion and authority intelligently. In a way and a manner that brings glory to the name of the Lord. Let me do a recap and then we'll pray. Number one, we define power as the capacity to influence outcomes. We define power as the force that compels compliance. Number two, we define authority as the right to represent the legitimacy to use power. That if you do not have authority, the use of your power is illegal. As seen in the case of a military man and an armed robber. An armed robber has power, but he lacks authority. Why? Because there is no, the institution that authorized him is not there, cannot be identified. And the jurisdiction for the use of his rifle is also not there. I told you that authority is always jurisdictional. And that jurisdiction is defined as a sphere. The sphere where the use of power is allowed beyond which it becomes illegal i need to recap one last time on very strong points that i made for your understanding number one that man does not have absolute power no he cannot have absolute power because his power is derived are we together only god has absolute power and in fact i did say that he is the owner of all power that's what makes him omnipotent is an attribute of God that he did not share with man. I forgot to tell you that it's not everything in God's nature that he gave man. We are partakers of his divine nature, but not every aspect of his nature. There are dimensions of his nature he withdrew from man. That's what makes him God. His omnipresence, his omniscience, and his omnipotence. These are the three attributes of God that brands him in a class all by himself. Man did not receive that one. Are we together? This is very important then remember many of you were surprised when i made the statement that god does not have authority god cannot have authority the nature of authority i remind you is that an authority a person higher than you must confide upon you no god only manifested authority in jesus and that is because he became a man so we see him submit to john submit to simeon the prophet anna the prophetess are we together now because he was a pattern man a model for the believer as to how he will be walking with in authority he even said my father is greater than i yet we understand the triune nature but god cannot have authority if god has authority he must be loyal to someone i also told you that god cannot obey it's not an ability that he has who will he obey no. obedience is not a quality that God possesses he cannot obey no to obey means someone outside yourself must give you the instruction and there is no man who can instruct him God does not obey and this is I wish I had time I would have taught you I think it's a mistake that people have made in the body of Christ they command God and sometimes we say statements like we need to give God permission in the earth and I understand what sometimes preachers are trying to say but it's not exactly true no man gives God permission uh, what he does is partnership it's not permission if God does not seek your will and still does something he's still right because the earth is still is still his own 
are we together now yes he limited himself to allow man taste of the power of revealing his glory but when he walks with man it is not weakness it is allowing man to share in he, that glory are we together so he said if all men refuse to praise me i can ignore them and raise up stones and it is not illegal so if i want to pray for the sick now and god wants the sick to come and i don't pray and it looks like the sick are not healed it's not that god is limited is that he has bound himself to give man an opportunity to experience his glory also but it is within his exclusive ability to do anything with or without the permission of man because he has power without authority the person who has power without authority also does not have jurisdiction for the use of that power because god is not defined by any jurisdiction to the point that paul talks about the possibility of tasting of the power of the ages to come who owns that one are we together god is not restricted by time by dimensions he can go into your yesterday your tomorrow and he can bless you and speak over your life i told you that one of the reasons why we believe god is not just that he has integrity is because he's the only one who can speak like that there is no other person higher than him to contend with him so if you disbelieve god it is proof that you suspect he's a liar that somewhere there is someone higher than him and he's not telling you the truth hallelujah we're going to pray many believers do not understand the jurisdiction of their power so we pray and we say all kinds of things and they never get answered there is intelligence to the use of power i didn't have the time to teach you on how the believer executes power because there is a we are given a code of conduct are we together there are rules of engagement for instance when you see a herbalist there is a way he's trained to use power he can look at you and say bring chicken bring this bring that now the believer does not act like that there is a way we release the power of god and one of the platforms i told you earlier on is in prayer mark 11 24 what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that thou receivest them and thou shall have them number two is by the use of the name we can spend all night talking about that the use of the name of jesus is not the recitation of the name the power is not in the recitation the recitation only makes creation know that he is the one we are talking about the use of the name of jesus is first a consciousness of his exalted position jesus never had to use his name to say in my, in my name he only said in my name when he was talking to the disciples so you can say in jesus name and you did not use the name of jesus it is not the recitation no otherwise the name will be a journey some charm somewhere it is a consciousness a consciousness the name is a capture of the office that has been given to him now are we together when you say jesus his name was not even jesus i hope you know that yes so when you say jesus demons are not i mean the j-e-s-u-s -S you are talking about it did not exist many years ago in that form if you go to israel and say jesus they will correct you because the number one they will say your pronunciation is wrong and now begin to argue about the person you are talking about there are footballers that carry this name you call their name and see whether demons will go so it's not i'm not saying don't use jesus i hope you get what i'm saying when we say jesus we are letting creation know that the force behind the results is the one exalted as lord and christ but the name jesus is not a person's name the owner of that name today has an office it is that office that the power comes from because demons can call jesus too but they do not understand the power of the office the bible says and every knee will bow of things in earth under the earth and confess that jesus has now become lord that is the name the name is his lordship it's an office of dominion the earth is the why do you call me lord lord the moment you come to a revelation of his lordship you have found the key to the name it's not the pronunciation of his earth work the name jesus was a name that was given to him he would have been anybody joshua you would have been ebenezer you would have been anything at all are we together 
So when demons see you and you say, in Jesus' name, they look behind the speakings because the damsel said, these are men who came to, she was saying everything right, but it was by a familiar spirit. So when we say in Jesus' name, we are saying that name so that for us and those who hear us, we know that the, the one whose office we are invoking is the one they know as Jesus, but it is a consciousness. And when demons know you carry that consciousness of being exalted. Number one, your oneness with Christ. Number two, your positional advantage. Not just that he's great, but that you are exalted with him now. Then your shadows can heal. The shadows do not call the name of Jesus. But the authority that is behind that name. We have to stop. Rise up on your feet. Can we pray for a minute or two? Go ahead, lift your voice and pray. The believer given authority in Christ, capacity to exact dominion upon creation. Go ahead and pray. Declare it upon your life. I have authority. I have power. I understand the jurisdiction of my authority. I understand the use of the power that the assignment of power is to birth the will and the purposes of God someone is praying are you praying for the next one minute <laughs> what manner of man is this that even the winds and the waves obey him what manner of man is this I have power and I have authority the legitimacy to use that power over creation against unclean spirits over situations and circumstances hallelujah one more prayer point and then i just speak over you and we are done remember now you have power and you have authority there is no fear to the one who has authority because the institution that conferred it upon you defends you and if need be they validate that you are not using it illegitimately are we together now yes it is god that gave you power and he gave you authority and jurisdiction so when you speak over your life and creation and they refuse to obey it is not your business again the one who conferred the authority upon you for his name's sake they hurt his integrity when they disobey you and he is forced to now use his absolute power without authority and force creation to hear you are you ready to speak over your destiny now now you know that you can speak and pray without fear why because you have power and you have authority and remember the modus operandi is that all your speakings must be consistent with the will of God what is the will of God his thoughts revealed in what he said Genesis 21 1 the Lord visited Sarah as he has said he did unto Sarah as he has spoken so everything you know that God has said concerning you I call them exceeding great and precious promises the Bible says that by them we might be the partakers of his divine nature haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust in one minute walking on borrowed time go ahead and declare over your destiny do not be silent inside outside online go ahead and begin to pray declare the Lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of the Lord is the strength of my life in the name of Jesus the head and not the tail exalted above the nations of the earth someone is making declarations remember you have authority remember you have power remember you are praying within the jurisdiction of your authority you are praying consistent with the will of God there is a government above you that insists that creation circumstances your destiny becomes obedient take a minute to pray the favor of God working in my life doors are opening by the spirit no weapon fashioned against me shall prosper 
and every tongue that rises up against me falls in judgment in the name of Jesus I go forward I work strong by the spirit of the living God his wisdom is at work in my life his power is at work in my life is someone declaring in one minute the year ends in victory for me thanks be to God which causes me to triumph always and this is the victory that overcome the world even my faith in the name of Jesus Christ creation aligns itself to work out the purposes of God in my life man walk in partnership with the spirit of grace working out the purposes of God in my life in the name of Jesus everything I touch is blessed blessed by the spirit of God in Jesus mighty name we pray in Jesus name we pray Pastor Jerry let me borrow one minute from your time and just make an altar call um, I believe that until men encounter Jesus in truth there is no possibility for walking in true power it is impossible that in a crowd of thousands of people here inside outside following online there will always because the Bible says the Lord added daily not just as many as should be transformed they first have to be saved because his desire is first that all men be saved then that they come into the knowledge of the truth I believe that there's someone here you came to church tonight you are inside here you're outside and you're saying apostle on hearing you speak I am that one person who has only used his power invested in principles without a relationship with the son of the living God he came to Nicodemus and he said in John 3 and verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have life everlasting 17 says for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved here is your chance tonight remember at the detriment of your eternal salvation your eternal your eternity God allows you to choose two groups in one the first is someone who is saying I have never truly consciously made Jesus Lord of my life number two the second is saying apostle I love Jesus and but here and there my life has gone haywire and I need to rededicate my life I'm only looking for one sincere person who will not lie to himself or herself I don't need everybody one sincere person I begin to count one to five all of the overflows you may do well to just move to your screens and those who are in here may I request with gallancy and honor make your way to the front I begin to count one let's celebrate them as they come two thank you thank you for your courage win that war tonight once and for all come to Jesus the Bible declares as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away come three if you're coming I want you to run come there's no shame there's no fear you are coming to your Savior the custodian and the owner of all power the power that can change your life he is able to by his power save even to the uttermost Four. the last count and I begin to pray hallelujah amen I will just pray and then I'll take my seat when Pastor Jerry comes and takes his session he will make prophetic declarations I believe over your destiny and you receive with all your heart and let that open you up to new chapters because one of the ways that we receive the power of God is through prophetic declarations there are times that you are spoken upon hallelujah for all of you who are in front here thank you very much for making this bold and noble decision those who are following either by television or watching online thank you for joining here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life lift your right hand if you read your word I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive you into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave 
is broken over my life from tonight until forever i'm a child of god the righteousness of god in christ keep your hands lifted father thank you for these precious ones and i stand tonight under the corporate anointing here to make declarations that your sins are truly forgiven by the integrity of scripture in the name of jesus i call you the righteousness of god in christ and i commend you to the word of his grace and to the ministry of the holy spirit that you'll be built you'll be established in righteousness you will love jesus all the days of your life and you will live for him forever in jesus name any instructions on what to do with them okay beautiful so here's what i want you to do all of you um there's a gentleman and a lady i see waving their hands may i please request that you move to my right that will be your left and they'll have a word with you very quickly and then you return to join the next session let's give them a big god bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord pastor larry thank you so very much house on the rock thank you so much i love you may god bless you in jesus name